There's no master density. <sighs> Been a little sleepy, but that's life. I think. Let me think. Well, among other things, Kirara is done. And got a decent amount of stuff in the party, right? Let's. Thought he was not in headphones. There we go. Okay. Stately check in. I think. Get a few more of these for Mr. Kinich later. Hmm. Question is what I'm going to use that on. Think, good chance. That's what Kinich wants, but to be totally honest, to be entirely honest, I would think I would like a bit more in the way of his books, maybe. I don't know. Depending on how. Because I can't exactly save these, can I? Well, no fight I really need to do. You know, so I could just condense some resin. Yeah, yeah. We're shown. Hmm. Okay. That's there. And. Hmm. Yeah, and having Pyro on hand should make this. make it a lot easier to use Milani effectively. Good stuff. Hmm. Okay. So. Put this down. What I've also realized is that there was a. completely miss. Okay. Oh, okay. Alright. Take that down. Hmm. Well, Emily can handle a lot of it herself now. That is also nice. Yeah, having the actual kit work goes a long way. Okay. Come on. Get over here. And oh my. Come on. And this down. Let's hope that the right people stay in the right spots. Right. Okay, you're over here. Oh, well, I, I thought I would have a bit more interruption res. Okay, bye, and it's that much easier now. Okay. Somebody is over in treetop land. Warriors' challenges. Just to own their strength. Hmm. Calm down. Okay, so that will actually give drops. We got... This boss over here, who I might actually like to try using Milani on, maybe? It is single target, that said. Milani also has... Talent book she needs as well. Mm -mm. Monday, Thursday, Sunday. Mm -mm. Could have gotten those yesterday, but I had other priorities. Okay. Come on, one, two, three, four, one, okay. Decent enough. It does still kind of wow me that condensed crystals are around here. Okay. Just get that mining stuff done if we feel like it. Okay. Thanks. How many hits are we going to get from this night soul? Oh, so it seems a similar amount. Well, it actually deals lots of damage to crystals, too, which that surprises me. I would expect the same amount of blunt damage to the crystals, but that gets reduced while I feel, too. Hmm. Well, okay. This down. And I did not expect that. Alright. Put this bonus up, but thanks. Move on field. I did not intend to do it like that. And fight. 
And very, very good. Thank you. And yeah. Those missiles are very, very effective. Okay. Thank you. Then we got another Hilotrocon. Okay. Hmm. This down here, I suppose, and thank you. I did not mean that. That works well enough, I suppose. Come on, get the crystal eyes. And Emily, thank you. Should help a bit, presumably. Got one of them. Okay, get over here. Or not. Okay. What are they doing, even? Well, Dio will, Dio will help it. Presumably, I... Or not. I guess you can't get through here? Oh, no damage means no Dio. No, burning. But, mm, Come on, keep that up. Is that going to keep the burning on? Well, the shield doesn't stop burning, period. There we are. Oh, that... Destroyed the pillar. Okay. You know, things are actually... They're kind of gone. This is actually rather serviceable. It's one of those targets over there. I do a decent job at mixing in some uses of the other dragons and sort of external areas, because this is not Toyok Springs yet. Okay, hey, your ladder, Michika from the Sanzo Canopy, seems to have been having some trouble recently. Okay. Um, go over here. Get to chatting with. She's over there, okay. Hello. Mishika, manager careers, longhouse. Bumbling fool, said they lost another world of packages, told them not to mess around while they were delivering things, what happened. Here were couriers, ignored instructions yet again. Just what? They've gone lost a bunch of packages. Oh, don't they realize that such carelessness damages the reputation of the signs of the canopy? When you're out on the job, focus on delivering things. If you're going down a slope, just keep going as you normally would. Why do you suddenly drop into a slide like you're on vacation? I've told them so many times that these youngsters just won't listen. All they care about is chasing cheap thrills. Now I'll have to get someone to retrieve those packages. Let me think who's free right now. In the hand, are the packages big? No, they're not. That's what makes them real house little fun. It's careless little. If you have the time, would you be willing to help me track them down? Career's long house patrol manpower right now, so if I want to find myself, there'd be no one here to man the store and crumb even to me. That's amazing, thanks so much. Don't worry, I wouldn't just leave you to find a needle in the haystack and other the roots, those kids usually text like probably gets where those packages have been missing. Mark out those probable locations, thank you in advance, I'm counting on you. Track down the missing packages. One, two, should be a few more. Oh, we don't have it yet. Well, must have lose it along the way again. Oh! Oh, that's interesting. So we can find ones around the world and give them to him there. Ah, oh, that's the turning point. That's legitimately very cool. Let's have those treasure maps scattered around. Four point two Fontaine. No, four point three? Four point two Fontaine, right. Okay. So packages based on the marks Michika made for us. These packages should be somewhere nearby. Let's have a closer look around. Where could they be? Probably in trees. You can see a little box under that sigil, too. Oh, okay. So down there, track down the missing packages. Down underneath. I presume that there are probably a few more, actually. Pick up. Missing package. Express delivery package. It's supposed to buy Karis' courier. If you're slightly more, better for the to to Mishika. There's gotta be... a few more, right? I don't think it was... 
I think there's an achievement collected, presumably. If I check around, is this jump up? Here, what? A report back to Mishika. Hmm. Was there one that I missed? That's my question. Okay. Okay, please, please, please. All right. Hey, your letter. Some kind of achievement. Is there a fourth package? Yeah, because this is one that has to have an achievement collected, presumably. Maybe. Three. Huh. So how do... New achievement. Hmm. Someone put something up on Holy Lab. Not come from daily commissions? Huh. Packages return in letters. Hmm. Oh, whatever. Huh. Hmm. -hmm. Okay. Huh. Just trying to think. Hmm. Okay. Okay. Doesn't say anything. I'm not even sure there's actually a quest. That's live. I guess we can just go back and give them their water back. I keep forgetting that reputation is actually a teleport point now for not one tribe, just because there are multiple. Let's give him back his stuff, how to go, match by the packages, and all three. I think it was just three. Two or three, that's all of them. Excellent job, you're true of them all. Wait a second, this one might be over by Tundam. Here's your payment, thanks for the help. Get up to serious one with Tundam about this. Okay. Cool. Presumably, there's some kind of achievement that I just. not pay enough attention to. So we'll go quick. These reputation rules, real quick. It's nice. How much do I got saved for Kinich? So that's... 60... 177 rolls right now, which is... quite nice. Thank you! Emily will take a few more weeks to get to Max Friendship. Okay. How do I want to... do this then? There was a challenge down here, one of those obsidian points, so I'm going to go see what is inside there, what kind of fight. So I've not actually taken on any of the special challenge fights yet, and I'd like to see what they are like. Wait, wait. Oh, it's probably because I've been... Not because I went in the wrong direction, though I definitely did go in the wrong direction. Okay. Thank you. Stay on the water and... Right over this way, right... Look inside here. Oh well. Touch this. Oh, use a Night Jade. To activate the Chamber of Night's Trial. Nearly weightless Black Jade, enveloped in chilling flames of... Or not one's legends offering you this specific altar might just open the path to the king ruled by the knight. So to get inside here for those challenges, I need to find some treasure item somewhere. Okay, well that stopped me right in my tracks. <laughs> but before I get on those travel chronicles, well for one, I should probably do another quick fight with that one local legend for whistles. That said, I... Hmm. Wondering what team I'd like to try to use. I think... I might actually want to stick with 
I'll hike him team. Ooh, that was weird. And it switched lagged a little. Computer doesn't seem all that hot. So I'm curious as to why that was. Okay, cool. Thank you. Cool. Thanks. And it's like that. And cool. Luckily, does not move around all that much. The pepper boot damage is still real good. Okay. Cool. Okay. Mm -hmm. This. Still my best option by far. Just gotta use those iframes pretty well. Okay. And. This. Mm. Come on. Oh, I did not expect or want that. Luckily, she's kind of stuck. Still, that was less than ideal. Oh, come on up. Okay. Luckily, we managed to freeze out of the way and dodge that just in time, but still. We are really moving. Okay. Let's get over here, please. Come on. Fun. And I just... Oh, that explosion is... Less than ideal for the situation. Mm. Shinobu is not in a great position. Let's see what happens. This is still definitely single target team number one. That is fine with me. I like this team. And dodge and that down. This is much, much better here. Okay. Just need to. Oh, well, I. Oh, that's right, the constant damage would kill. That really sucked. Okay. Hmm. Can I... Well, I guess we can try to get a few blooms and the like, but I... Uh, that does break it, but it's very imperfect. Just gotta make sure nobody dies. You will give Shinobu some soup. Just plus on see if it's soup. Thank you. Oh, baby, I... Okay. Luckily, we dodged that. That is good. And, oh, I, oh, please. Things are bad news. Hello. Good to see you again. Just waiting for that stupid thing to explode, because this team does not have a great way to handle that. Which is honestly the biggest issue here. Just no good way to handle a can. Well, I... Mm, application is... Well, depending on who's on the field is the thing. Mm, connection is its issues here. And... Uh, thanks. Spread. Break. Kathy? Kathy? Who is this... Kathy? Oh, catchy, okay. Well, you know, whatever. Oh! Fall damage kill. That was fun. It... Again, world level 9 is still part of it. But... That fight is... Actually insane. It... You really have to dodge stuff. Even with Zhang Li, it only protects you so much. Either way... Here, I'll give you... I'll let you choose. Should we explore this temple first? Or do one of the Tribal Chronicles quests first? That's my question. So I want to do probably the Geo one, because I accidentally started that one already. Yeah! World level 9 is part of it. Okay. You're the king. Poka. We're back here. We're going quite well, too. How'd it go? Run any problems? Sure got a lot done down there. Tell Poka what happened down by the roots of the flame branch tree, which is lava. And chests, which may be inaccessible. Well, may have been if I hadn't grabbed them before the lava rose. So you really pulled it off? Really? Now we know one that we won't be needing to trouble the masters of the night wind or the collective of plenty about this matter. But I told you I knew we could do it, so you're saying that Wada already knew there was something wrong with Lemgranite Tree's words. Yeah, that's what I kind of thought, too. 
course we're all aware of what's been going with the mother flying rat tree. T-Sox the only one who'd think that no one else had noticed. Go about trying to solve the problem all by himself, but we did it. Anyway, despite being so set in his way of thinking, something quite endearing about his obstinacy, headship. Haha, uh -huh, once again, thanks to two of you, Travel and Pymont. In truth, though, I'd heard your names a long time ago. After all, his career was staying in the loop is how I make a living. So I simply gave you a little nudge along the way about leaving that past somewhere you'd come across it. Oh, so that was you. Ah, uh, indeed. Well, I'm guessing that blockhead already rewarded you, so what kind of person would I be if I gave you any less than he did? Here, take these. Please, with this reward, would our past grievances be forgotten, huh? And... she's gone! Just a tiny bit of money. It's okay. Being, Itali being an Italian may be a crime, but it's only a misdemeanor. Typically dissonance. Shevin from her Emporium went out alone to collect ores, now she seems to be in danger, and at Emix's request, you decide to go save her. Let's enable our focused experience mode. Okay, focus experience mode enabled for typically dissonance. Let me... It's my stuff. So that message was talking about the trainers for the dragon techniques. Really? Oh, now these teams are identical now. All you have to do to avoid my ire is stop being Italian. It's that easy. Frankly, I'm just surprised you haven't done it already. And, okay, Emix, the one from the quest. Right, this kid. Okay. Hello. Help me save. Master Shaven. Ikno. Strongest, most steadfast berserker in all the world. Name my tool. That's its tenacity, berserker its strengths, rotten to select my most faith in its abilities, names are important vessels of symbolism and not one. So as trusted tool is your most glorious name of its own. Tell me about those names. You've heard of ancient names, right? Powerful warriors chose them by the wild, but grand and ancient name. You've been fought in city and stone. This means that warriors have been acknowledged that the ability to inherit the legacy of all heroes who have carried this name before. Follow the path of their predecessors to fight for not one. The wild has never been wrong. Ancient names are precious and each will be bestowed upon a warrior who is worthy of the title. Speaking of, do you have a tool or weapon that always comes in handy? Why don't you also give a name? Sure, it's earned one for itself. Let's name it the strongest sword. Not bad, a concise name. It's filled with ambition. That's good principle. It's got a pretty high quality hammer at home, which I was planning on calling the story and call succulent. It's like I'll have to reconsider that name now. And we got... Oh, some of the succulents. That's fun. But... Quest is right over there. You know, I think... I'll ride there in person. Sure. But... I was having a discussion with someone earlier about the localization of the region. And I think the conclusion that I drew from it, and I do stand by it, was that... Honest to goodness, having not won at all... Was a, and I've said this, was a massive own goal for Mahoyo. Because for various reasons, there was just not really a way to do that. That would not end up infuriating or alienating some part of their audience. Either because, quite frankly, their audience was racist. But beyond even that, just... Th there is no aspect of depicting indigenous peoples that is free from contention or that people will unabashedly agree with. Because there was this person I was talking to strongly objected to the fact that the six groups of not one are named tribes because it has some connotations of being you know, primitive. It can be a derogatory term. But on one hand, it's just sort of... The entire point of it is that they aren't primitive. But they still engage in, you know, lifestyles informed by tradition. It's very... To, to a certain extent, to accept that the, the idea of a sort of tribal, sort of broadly geographic, hereditary way of societal organization, to believe that that's inherently inferior and primitive, is itself a very Western chauvinist way of seeing the world. And at the very same time, even if you could argue that even describing them as tribes is a bit derogatory, 
the meaning of words can change or evolve. You know, one way that that can change is through positive depictions of what is unabashedly, you know, a tribal way of living. And, you know, a lot of the people, the cultures, for better or worse, that are depicted and used as reference will... At the, at the very least in Africa, in English-speaking parts of Africa, people describe themselves as having tribal allegiances. If, for example, a lot of people will refer to themselves as being Igbo, and they'll say it's a tribal identity specifically. And it's not meant and it's not derogatory in any way. It's just meant to describe the specific cultural reality. And But I think that's sort of the point, that there, there, there's an urge, there's a desire among well-intentioned Western people to try to figure out you know, what the consensus opinion on how, you know, groups of marginalized people want to be depicted. But the issue is, is that there is no consensus because there... It's not one person. You can't really decide one person to speak for the entirety of the group. There's no one singular opinion that depicts and describes every single person whose identity could be described as indigenous. And in fact, a lot of very intelligent, talented scholarship on the topic by minority sociologists and, and philosophers themselves specifically say that real progress is not looking for someone, and the specific example they gave was figures like Booker T. Washington. It's this guy named... Oh, just give me a second. It's been a while since I read this paper. But it was, it was a guy named Adolf Reed Jr., who's a writer, philosopher, sociologist on the East Coast, I believe. But he had an essay entitled, What Are the Drums Saying, Booker? Which basically lambasts a number of you know, other intellectuals in his sort of sphere for playing into the idea that, you know, there could ever be one sort of designated spokesperson for an entire ethnic group or culture for the sake of their own personal profit. You know, it's very much pointing at a lot of old media, specifically is referencing, I believe it was called Distant Drums, basically one of those old sort of going on safari type shows where they would have you know all these white explorers and then just this one native representative who you know not a specific culture just representing all the natives of the region who is somehow able to just interpret and speak to the reality of everything everyone there flatten into one single consensus for the sake of the objectives of the explorer slash colonizer type characters. And basically what he's saying in the essay is that to try to anoint one specific intellectual, no matter how smart, though quite frankly he says that, you know, to do that is a fundamentally corporate, very honestly craven kind of way of seeing the world because it forces you to ignore the actual diversity, and I mean that in every sense of the word, of just differences of thought, legitimate differences of opinion. You, you accept the idea that all of culture can be flattened and made into a singular consensus on the grounds of a group. Okay, well... Let's teleport waypoint up there. Think... And on one hand, you can say that, you know, you do what you need to survive. But to that I say... And I know I'm one to talk for a number of reasons, but... 
one thing that a lot of people notice, and I hope we should be getting close. Search the area, standard toes of the traveler. Uh, one of the things mentioned in Mark Fisher's Capitalist Realism is basically that younger generations, that is us, we don't really have the idea of quote-unquote selling out. Or at the very least, we don't have a notion of selling out as something negative or derogatory. That managing to monetize things is almost always seen as an unambiguous good and is an unambiguous sign of success. Get away from me. There was never any real interrogation. But where there's not your shaven. Of the idea that making money is not the primary goal or something that can or maybe even should be avoided even at risk or harm to oneself. Pins are rocking to with golden runes. Added to the archive. What is this, Elden Ring? I... I'm crazy. I'm legitimately deranged. <laughs> also, academia has no future in America. You need huge amounts of money behind you because you are never going to make money. You need external support of some sort if you want to do anything in academia. Because everything in America is being stripped for cash. It's been that way for decades. You can thank Ronald Reagan. Giant salt focus and nails known as shadow pins. Legend has it the lab that the children of Echoes forged them from the very flesh and blood of their tribal warriors and hung them up high in this place into me the very shadows of the depths, ancient shadows of the depths below. Okay. It's interesting. So that guy's walking over there, but we just want to take out this group of people. But... T to say and think a bit more about not one storyline. Yeah. Just bad pay or. Mm. I've said it before. I think it's pro it's a different kind of problem. I think so in my argue it's the exact opposite kind of problem, but I think that weeds are running interference for Vested financial interest, thankfully. But when people talk about sort of, and I think some of it is a bit disingenuous, but sort of slowing down and technological process progress in America, so to speak, one thing people occasionally bring up, and I wholeheartedly agree with it, is that all the financial incentives mean that very intelligent people who might be working in material science or medicinal or drug development or something like that a few decades ago and part of it is probably frankly the lack of a war economy maybe the end of the cold war honestly but they're all working in finance maybe financial tech but it's all just financialized funny money now there's no money left in production of real goods or real services it's all just passing money around and watching numbers on a graph get go get bigger safe shaven all right, and that's interesting. Oh, come on. Thank you. I, come on, crystallize that. Thank you. I, something is off with the connection today, and I do not know that. Well, whatever. Bruce, Jemporium, and... What? The stuff about the fact that everyone is coast teeth come from so strong. I'm coast teeth. Let's get out of your boys, run, weave the stuff if you want to weave, we drop all of it. And someone will show up. Did, well, they didn't put up much of a fight. Guess they know what they were up against, or reputation has its perks. What I am is an unabashed, shameless contrarian. All I do is criticize. Well, that's what I do in Genshin, too. You, thank you so much. I thought I wasn't going to make it down this mountain alive. Oh, she's got a monocle. Guys, not on Charlotte. Saved by the traveler, because my luck's not too bad today. Sorry, let me introduce myself. I'm Shaven, a gem artisan. I'm not usually this lucky. Maybe things are looking up. Emix sent us to help. She did, huh? I'm not calling me that girl. Didn't mean to make her worry. Planning to be gone longer than two days tops. Oh, okay. 
Uh, well, you're not Italian. You're Sicilian. I will say... I like that Charlotte has the monocle. It's a big charm point. Then I discover a new seam of volcanic crystal near the shadow pin. It's a large deposit and the purity is exceptional. Throwing up a whole bunch of it was getting ready to cut back. The fulgiston within the crystals attracted monsters. Why did you say that four times? It seems a bit disproportionate to me. Well, it's because four is death in Eastern Asian languages. Just picking up on that. They were calling you a weeb. Took up a whole bunch of it and was getting ready to head back, but the Fogistan and the Crystals attracted monsters. Paniku. I read a narrow path to avoid them, but by the time I was in the clear, I ended up running into those bandits. You showed up in the nick of time. Who's Nick? The situation was so dangerous, why didn't you just drop the crystals and run? The snowman? I left most of them behind, believe me. I only kept the purest trunk after bringing it back no matter what. For Tlazoli and poor Lineshka, who are they? Alright, you wouldn't know it. Tlazoli is a former ancient name artisan. She went and does that too, and Neshka is her daughter. So she crafts. I know. Ancient names? Exactly! She went and does that line of business too. Oh, you know Shironen? I try to mention the image of Tlazoli. She can sing Shironen's praises forever, and that's. Why? Shiwanen is going to have a third part of the Tribal Chronicles, foremost expert in ancient names, future of our tribe, the finest artisan in that one, and never hear the end in it. I too know it's only missed the days when she's forged ancient names, she never says much, but I can tell. But she stopped. Well, it hates me. Maybe you too. Mostly me. So her daughter, Prunechka, contracted an awful illness, and Tuzoli put everything aside to take care of her. And as Nechka's illness grew worse, Tuzoli never gave up, like a torch in the night. She was determined to do her bright, even as darkness encroached from all directions. So all is all that ends well, thanks to the doctor's medicine and the great spirit's protection, Nechka's flame was for King Doctor. Condition has been slowly improving ever since. She's still weak, of course, and has recuperated home, but she's well enough to write letters already. For what's her shoe in it, apparently your dream is by an ancient name's forger, just like her mother. Birthday's in a few days, so it was only asked me to find a pure volcanic crystal to give it her as a present. That's why you're out here, and I want you to leave the crystal behind. So yeah, talk about an important chunk of ore, what a nice gift. That one hopes it helps her feel better. It, it's cute. I'm sure she and her mother appreciate your well wishes. Right, let's head back. I'm sure Emix is worried sick. Actually, why don't you come with me and visit Shazoli tomorrow? So all thanks to you, that nature bring back the crystal. I deserve a reward for helping to protect something so significant. So what makes Nishka happy is an ancient name. Hey, the power arcade said she contacted you and ended by that already, so the next patch was zoom away. Let's not complicate things. You don't need anything fancy like that, and the gift is more than enough. <laughs> Oh, don't worry, something tells me I'll like this one. But I'll let Tazoli tell you what it is herself. Razoli. And that one is... The first act is always incredibly short. Okay. Next one. Horse Echoes, talk to Shaven. I will say... And I think you can kind of make a similar point about Honkai Third. That... There is a meaningful, small, not the primary or intended, but meaningful, especially in the West, female fan base for Honkai Third, specifically. Because, you know, I talk about this, but the Faustian bargain that the game always had is that there would be, you know, in exchange for having roughly a two to one female male character release ratio. All of the male characters would be story relevant, rather disproportionately so. And the fact that not one is probably going to skew the gender ratio, because for all we know, we might have literally only three guys, period, and only one five star. Because we got Kinich, we have Aoife, and Ororon, and apparently Capitano might not be playable at least this patch cycle, who knows. But it's sort of, I, it's not just that, just people who like seeing the female characters actually be meaningfully relevant to the story. Because it, you know, they took Kachina and Milani's characters very serious. It's maybe a little unpleasant to think that 
it's because they they're maybe just cutting back maybe permanently on male characters and the intention of maybe phasing them out permanently forever. But at the very same time, screen time is always a zero-sum game. If one character has more screen time, one other character necessarily is going to have less. That's just the way that time works. But it... And it's a point I've made and thought about in relation to fate a lot of times, too, because people will mention, you know, why, for example, did they make Francis Drake into a woman? Though, to be fair, at least in, in, originally, even though they probably retconned that by now, the reason their Francis Drake was a woman was apparently because she was actually supposed to be Queen Elizabeth, who s used a pseudonym as Francis Drake to go out and sail as a pirate, which is actually a pretty cool concept. But people ask, you know, there were female pirates in history. Well, they did add Anne Bonny and Mary Reed, and they did make them lesbians. They probably were in real life, too. But other ones, like the Chinese pirate captain queen, Xingxia, and it's very much a sort of, because the point is not as awful as it is. And ironically, the original Fate probably was one of the better ones in terms of actually engaging with, you know, the idea of, you know, what does it actually mean for King Arthur to have been a woman? You know, how do you seriously reckon with, you know, what being a woman would have meant for her in the context of her historical era? But the point, especially in the later works, being more mainstream, being more mass appeal, not being a niche little dojin work, had to become more mainstream because of that. You know, the point was not seriously engaging w with women in their stories. It was just like, oh, look, a waifu with a recognizable name. It... Which makes me sad, because when they want to write women well, they can write women real well. Through help, Shiv and the Order of Mahur's Emporium Escapes Danger seems to decide to prepare you for you as things, as all of these are just... The first ones are always just quick rescue missions, it seems. Of course, echoes a strange sound echoes across the ridgeline's edge. Tozoli. So the question is where is the next spot to go to? Navigate. Okay, and it's right over there. But... Like I said, and I mean this, in the most compassionate way possible, but a lot of people tend to make, even, maybe even especially well-intentioned people, a lot of weird and rather patronizing assumptions about what authentic living, an authentic way of life for a minority group is. And one thing that comes to mind is a few months ago there was this instance where I think it was in not Winnipeg, not Saskatchewan, maybe man, in a big Canadian city, there was a resolution by a sort of progressive city council to give a bunch of land, to cede a bunch of land back to a local First Nations tribe. And what they end up doing with it, and it's really funny because you see a lot, of, you saw a number of it's supposedly forward-thinking people saying, oh, but they were supposed to build teepees, wooden houses. But what they did was build a bunch of ecologically friendly, but very dense, high-rise apartment housing, sustainable apartment housing that was basically, we are going to build housing that is ecologically friendly, mixed-use, shops, places to work, places to live, for poor families, including especially, but not limited to our own tribes, people who have trouble getting land. And... I think part of it is also just that 
there, there's a NIMBY, which which stands for Not In My Backyard Tendency, among a lot of supposedly forward-thinking people, that when their property values are threatened, they tend to get very, very reactionary very quickly. But it's just... And then and the people said, you know, it's sort of... <laughs> do you want us to actually... You know, lift our people out of poverty with your help, or do you want us to just be a living museum exhibit, basically? You know, this is our money. We are moving into the 21st century because we want to do that. The new stuff is in... Well, what is your teacher talking Is your teacher talking about stuff like... Oh... Reservation systems and schooling systems or just giving them the land, because what's going on right now with that, and that's not to say that Canada's treatment of First Nations is unambiguously good, but this is an example of how things can go really, really, really well, because not only is it helping that marginalized group, but it's building more housing, which is basically one of the biggest problems of our time, especially in Canada, because the big thing with Canada right now is that There are a lot of poor immigrant people who live in absolutely squalid conditions, in part because there's no housing being built because of zoning codes and lots of regulations. And it leads to lots of hay being made for a lot of very bigoted right-wing politics because it forces the immigrants and the native poor into conflict. But if you build more housing and drive housing prices down, that wedge goes away, you know. It doesn't solve every single problem there, but it takes a huge plank away from a lot of nativist politics because that housing conflict becomes a lot less salient. Yeah, but this isn't what's going on. What's going on is kind of the precise opposite where a lot of well-intentioned people say yeah we're gonna do the whole land back thing and then when the people who get the land back choose to do things that create a lot of economic surplus that are good for not only their tribal group but literally for just the poor and working class of the city in general they complain because what they wanted was white savior complex kind of stuff they wanted basically a subordinate population to look at and use as a museum ex museum exhibit. Instead of, you know, reckoning with renewed autonomy of this people, these people, which, like I said, is good not just from a perspective of horizontal, just not just justice for, you know, one ethnicity compared to another, because that can easily lead to a lot of zero-sum stuff. But it's just an un unambiguous good from an economic class perspective, too, because they're building affordable housing. What they're doing with the land is building affordable housing. That's good for everyone except the NIMBYs. <laughs> the NIMBYs who were supposedly these high-minded progressive people. <laughs> it's very, very funny. Yeah, that's exactly it. That same... Pardon my French, same shit, different asshole. Meek's Apprentice, Mahur's Emporium. Hello, some of those news. Should definitely rather miss Sparkly Gems. Okay, so that's done. Recommendations, Gem Soon's popular. So we can buy Spinel fruit, but that's just a cooking ingredient. Yeah, it. I think... And this... Permit me to grandstand for a bit. Permit me to grandstand for a bit. But... I think... One of... I'm glad you like it. One of the traps you fall in, it's easy to fall into when you talk about these cultural interactions is to get really into ideas 
of cultural relativism, basically, and I've talked about this before, just... There's a difference between saying good and evil are things that we can question, that we can interrogate. But the goal should always be, you know, figuring out what is right and wrong. You know, the ideal situation is not unilaterally imposing your morality on someone else, but it's also not just looking blindly, because that's what also allows... It's very easy to commit evil either by r running roughshod over other people or just allowing evil to be committed by way of ignorance. The only way to really prevent evil, to create moral progress, is to patiently discuss, you know, to actually talk, to come to the discussion table. And I think, and this is a very fraught topic, but, you know, especially since we're in not one right now and they do talk about notions of sacrifice, it's interesting to talk about the idea of sacrifice. And I think it's also important to note is that what we often get is a caricature of sacrifice. And in fact, as funny as it sounds, Genshin actually does a pretty good job at talking about the reality of it, which is, you know, just killing the other guy, ripping his heart out. That's a stereotype that comes from a worried caricature descriptions. Most sacrifice was doing stuff like sort of mild sort of self-flagellation, self-mutilation as, as a devotional act. They would do things like sticking cactus spines through various parts of their skin, through noses, through ears, sort of the webbings of your fingers, your hands, which is pretty scary. But it was basically about giving back to the universe. Their idea was basically, we have to all give back to the universe that created us by basically returning our lifeblood to the world as an act of so, some of it is gratitude, exactly. And this is what they say, according to ancient tribal tradition, all the person takes comes from this world naturally, all the gain shall also be given back to it. Now, it wasn't really a matter of good or evil a lot of time, it was literally just, we need, for example, we need blood to fuel the sun, so we better give up some of our blood so that the sun doesn't disappear. And that that's a legitimate part, that was what they legitimately believed. And, but what you have to understand is that you know, and a lot of people who blindly apologize for the excesses of colonialism will say, oh, but such and such culture also did X bad thing. But that's the definition of whataboutism. Because the conquistadors did not go to Mexico. They didn't go to the Andes because they objected to the practice of human sacrifice and wanted to liberate the peoples from an oppressive regime. They did it because they wanted gold. <laughs> the... You know, even though they talked a big talk, the British, for example, talked a big talk about sort of stamping out slavery in Africa. They did not go to Africa to liberate their peoples from slavery. They did it because they wanted colonial possessions. The important thing is to drill down and see what the actual situation is. And sure, slavery is objectionable. You know, murdering captives is objectionable. But colonialism was all that and worse. It... You, you can't run interference for evil, no matter what that evil is and who it comes from. But at the very same time, that's exactly why it's so important to interrogate everything from a position of good faith. Oh, you're really looking forward to your gift. Yeah, it, that is foreign policy realism for you. And that's exactly why you need to approach things like these with an eye to skepticism. Happy to visit Chuzul in Nishko while I'm curious. On two, but we're also here to see how Nishko's doing. Can't be easy to recover from such a serious illness in that Mr. Zoli. She had to give up what she wants, we just wanted to cheer them up. Yeah, but it's just... Like I was saying before... I'm glad... That the stories do take the conflicts, the storylines of the female playable characters seriously, arguably more seriously than they did before. But at the very same time, I dislike what it represents in terms of the motivations for doing that and how that's likely to end up. 
you give up what you want, you just want to cheer them up. It's just sort of... It's very, very easy to people for people to ping-pong between two unpleasant extremes rather than trying to find a healthy balance. Hi, huh, I've already asked someone to swing by, which is the only note we're coming. It's probably made all of the necessary preparations. Let's go then. Do you mind watching the story you mix? I'll be right back. Mishu. So here we go. Horse echoes. But there aren't any horses in this game. How can they echo? Is it Tozoli with Shaven? You mix. Again, alright, you take care of Master Shaven. Don't let her go anywhere dangerous. But it's. Just to say it on its own, in and of itself, I do think it is good. Regardless of what it represents, the game is taking, exactly, taking its female characters seriously. But I wish that did not mean basically writing out all of the male characters from the storyline. And I really do think, I really do think that Keenich was written out of, that they rewrote the Archon quest in this version to downplay the role of Keenich. Because nothing was gained narratively from having Keenich not in the Night Kingdom, having Keenich not win the tournament, because... It's not like he was doing anything during that time that we know of. It was just basically getting him out of the way because they wanted to downplay their male characters. That's what it very much feels like to me. And I guess they're free to do that. But I don't like what it represents. Two, three, and there we are. Cool. Mm. Juvenile thing. Is it Tozoli with Shaven? And down over here, I think. Yeah, this should be good. Mm -hmm. But it's. Like I've said before, the reason I like this game specifically, the reason I started it and stuck with it, was. And at the time, it was because of friends. But it was because it was a game that could be enjoyed by a mixed audience. It was, at least at the time, though, that it did eventually change. Something that... Warning sign. Workshop is closed, no entry. Probably a domain. box, no way to gain entry. I would bet this is going to be a domain for Shilin's questline. I think that's a pretty safe assumption. It's over here. It's world quest right here. And I think, and I've talked about this, but it's a question of sort of, if the game is sort of changing its target audience, and I think it's kind of a given at this point, the question is why. Okay, open up there here. We are, nice home, right? Give me a sec, I'll go knock. Zoyer, home, open the door. I... I hope so. And all of it comes from one leaker who there's a very, very good chance that they're making stuff up. And also, the, the male draught of Inazuma also led to Simeru. It... And I know it's dumb and it's second order. But a lot of my enjoyment of the game comes from it being something that people will at least somewhat watch and enjoy discussing with me. And if it deliberately alienates half of its audience, that means, frankly, at least half of the people who would otherwise talk it from me just talk about it with me more or less dropping it. Which makes me sad. It is what it is. I should adjust this camera. Honestly, I need to... F I've said this, but I need to figure out a way to have the camera sort of on the side of the computer instead of above it. And the question is what I mount it on, because right now it's on the top of the monitor. Uh, but as I'm sure you've noticed, it's causing some issues with it looking like I've got my eyes closed or partially closed when they 
simply aren't just because of the angle. It... I guess. But... Honest to goodness, I think there's an argument to be said that it's already happened in that... We got... Four guys and all of four star three four star guys and all of Fontaine, and that was with a number of the four star guys. We did get that version about half of them being four star, including ones we had seen in the trailer, and it's just. I don't know. And honest to goodness, it's just I would enjoy the game a lot less if they stopped putting out male characters. I... I hope. And that's what I said, basically, that Inazuma, which was the most male-drawn region ever, came right before Sumeru, which was as close to the opposite as, we ever, as we've ever gotten. But... I hope they're all playable. I want them to be playable. But it's... And if they were, it would sort of... You know, because you got Dettore, Pantalone, and if Capitano is not here, presumably he might be in Cesnaida, Pulsanella, probably Piero. And, I mean, depending on how Sandrone is, I guess you could count presumably Elaine there sort of half. Maybe. Maybe even Electro Tartaglia. I've probably said this before, but I feel like... <sighs> One of the primary examples of just the game not really caring about its female audience demographic is that they haven't released a single alt yet. I... Assuming the Harbingers are playable. And it... <sighs> I don't want to drag you along through, at least through a region without any guys you want to see, to only experience more disappointment afterwards. I don't want to hazard that. It... Doors locked, shouldn't be out at this time of day. Nishka, Nishka, we shouldn't open up. Please, no response. Let me break down the door. Does something happen to the two of them? And Nishka got worse again. Well, I, I know you do, but it's, you like balance too, right? I don't know, but it's just, I was having a discussion earlier today that got a bit heated where I said that to somebody we were talking about, I was saying basically, Genshin is deliberately abandoning its female audience, not even because of money. I, yeah, I agree. I like gameplay too, but it's just, I don't know. And I said that one of the examples was just... They... Because what I said was... Male characters actually make a good amount of money when they come out. They could make more money if they actually put more out. And they said, well, it's quality over quantity. You know, they try to get... You know, especially since, you know, I said, you know... Men will roll for anything with boob... With tits and ass. Women need an actual character to roll for. They need an actual personality on their guys. You know, men have an eat-your-slop eat attitude, which women don't really replicate. Because men are opportunistic like that. And desperate, horny, thirsty, yada yada, etc. More derogatory things, you know. I got, I got mean. It was unwise. But it's... But what I said was basically... You know, even if that's true, they can put out alt kits. They could make... And th there were so many possible alts. I'll, I'll bring it up. It's... <sighs> See? They could... How many... There's so many ideas for alts. 
Yeah, they never made a Delusion Dartagle, no Delusion Diluc, no Abyskaya, no Electrocaza. Honest to God, that's a huge one. He could have kept the vision. No Tartaglia with any of the four weapons he's better at than bows. They can Mike Tartaglia with any of the other four weapons in the game. They've got precedent for that. No Cryobato. No Electro Scaramouche. It... And then what they said in response to that was, well, the male fans oftentimes didn't even play the game. They just like the characters out playing, like, you know, like the male fans, like the Deluxe husband, whatever, on TikTok that you brought up. But, but in that case, it's exactly that then. I, and I've said that, I did actually say that a few months ago, that they might be doing that for Conry and Celestia, because frankly, I can't imagine those places will be inhabited enough for them to make characters, a lot of new characters without doing ults. I don't know, maybe they just throw a bunch of random women with no lead up from previous regions like they've done before. Get more Yulas, more Kiraras. And I say that as someone who likes Kirara. But it's just... Instead of expanding on the male characters... And, it, you know, you have to look at it. They're, they're weaving money on the table. It's ideological. They're choosing to make less money to make a game they like more, which is a legitimate, cho legitimate choice that a company can make, but they're doing it in a way that deliberately sort of casts off their female audience. But it's... And what they said specifically was, you know, they're all going to love in deep space because they don't care about gameplay, and then I was like, well, yeah, exactly then. In that case, of course, Mahoyo is trying to jettison their female audience because they don't think they can keep them out of what they do. Because... An action RPG with some guys in it cannot compete with a dating sim with some optional action RPG elements. For people who are just playing, be gritting their teeth and struggling through gameplay that they hate unabashedly for a glimpse at a couple of boys. Something happened to the two of them, but Nish got worse again. Let's not overthink things. They were injured. She's on a sound was here. She's sitting soundly in her room. You know, like I've said, it, China especially has very siloed entertainment by gender. It, East Asia especially, especially outside of Japan, I mean, all, you probably heard about it, but it's just, South Korea's incredibly fucked up gender politics, everything is incredibly siloed. Male K-pop and female K-pop groups are both for women. The only thing that men in Korea consume is... Starcraft, League of Legends, and Creepshot Pornography. It, it, <laughs> it's a horrible, horrible place. A literal nightmare country. And... <laughs> it... <sighs> but I, I think it's not a coincidence... That China both has very solid entertainment, but it also makes a lot of high-quality games that are unabashedly meant to be girl games. I hope. You know, I I'm sure you heard about the whole thing with that one guy from that one group. But it's... <sighs> South Korea's gender politics will never, ever, ever improve as long as it still has a military draft. Or at least a military draft that is only for men. Because honest to God, it's probably the primary source of gender conflict. And there isn't really a right answer, especially because it just directly, yeah, yeah, directly pits half of society against the other half of society. But it's very much around the draft, and part of it is just... The Korean military is, you know, understandably, rather obviously, the single most patriarchal organization in the country. People have talked about how, you know, boys will go off to service as, you know, cute little soft boys and come back as violent misogynists who hate all women. And part of that's the institutional culture. But I think, and it's important to talk about this without in good faith, but it's also just the fact that South Korea is one of the most hyper-capitalist countries on the planet, 
you know, it's crazy that the peninsula is two very, very different kind of dystopias right next to each other, though to a certain extent, maybe that's actually more less surprising than you would think, you know, it's a race to the bottom in its own kind of way, but it's, it wouldn't matter, what I'm about to say wouldn't matter as much if finding jobs wasn't so ridiculously difficult, but it's, you know, men will lose three to four years of their life to mandatory military service that they have to do for free. I'm pretty sure. But the big thing is, is that that's three or four years that they're behind in education or the job market or stuff like that, while their female colleagues are, though of course it ignores discrimination in the workplace, and you know that's part of why it's such an intractable problem, in theory they get three to four more years to steal a march in the job market. But at the same time, you know, they have their own sort of American GI Bill equivalent where in exchange for military service, they get some job support. But the entire point is, is that, you know, as long as the situation is like this, as long as it's divided so down those lines, you're just going to have fingers pointed. You know, you're going to say, I can't believe, yeah, it's just sort of, you know, the men who have to do their military service are going to say, you know, I hate women because they get three years, three or four years of free job experience to steal a march in us. And the women will say, I hate the men because, well, for one, they're really sexist, but also because they get all this unfair job support that we don't get. And it's... Just a fundamentally intractable problem as long as things stay the way they are. Yeah, that's one thing, but it's... And... I think the easiest way to do it would honestly be just... If they don't want women serving in the military to have some sort of simil similar civil service requirement... But at the very same time, even if it might be good strategically, socially, in the long term, understandably, you're not going to get a lot of South Korean women signing up to put themselves on the line even more for a country that is like South Korea. It... Honest to goodness... I think what's just going to happen is that within the next hundred years, South Korea's population is going to dwindle to ten old men. Because all the women will have moved away. And what, whichever one of the kins is still in charge of North Korea is going to roll five tanks into Seoul and take over the country simply because there's literally no one left. That's the way the country's going. Not even kidding. Slowly we're coming. You have to take Nishka out against some medicine. What's that over there? Looks like a Tepesaurus nest. It's right. Tazul is a Tepesaurus companion. If I remember right, it's named Ziyangu. Yango. She was still in the forging business. She also have Ingo help with some digging work. Nishka fellow hasn't let it dig much recently, so we're gonna rehabilitate this dragon. Wait a minute, what the? It's a mess. Ingo's nowhere to be seen either, but y'all, these crystals so are to run along. Well, look at all these broken boxes. Something terrible has happened. Let's take a look at this closer look. You stay here, Shaven. Oh, all right. I'll just find a place to hide for now. How's that? That every single time Enix tells me not go somewhere dangerous, and I'm running into danger. It's like it words have some sort of power. Over me. That's the I was doing. Well, it. Generally speaking, the influence of the 4B movement in Megalia is exaggerated by pretty much everyone for different reasons. The, the biggest reason is if you talk to actual South Korean people. The biggest reason they're not having kids is not... To the extent that you can separate economics from politics, which, honest to God, you can't really do that anyway. It's because living in South Korea sucks so much that they don't want to bring kids into the world if they're going to have to live in South Korea. And sure, the gender politics are part of that, but it's also downstream from the hyper-capitalist, hyper-competition of... Nice. 
Thank you, I'm more interesting. Thank you. <laughs> I didn't say that. But downstream for the hyper capo cyber competition, which is itself probably the big reason that the, the ultimate reason that South Korea sucks so much is because of how ridiculously competitive the economy is. And I'm sure that North Korea's constant military threat has a good deal to do with that, but it's also a deliberate choice. He makes tells me to go somewhere dangerous at running into danger words of sort of power and it's the one it's doing. Also because when you have that kind of system, you destroy your own asabia, you destroy your own social cohesion and togetherness, you make people less willing to fight, you make willing people less willing to defend their society, which is why, again, in 100 years, there will be 10 whole men left as the entire population in South Korea, and Kim Jong-il V will roll in completely unopposed. Because no one is willing to defend that society anymore. What head cannon is that? Shrek's end of this quick to tip it, we sort of climbed up this mountain. Disgusting. Oh, is this gonna block? Oh, head up there and see. Oh, and that did damage me. Awesome. Wait. Oh, what? No! Kachina. Perish in battle. I think... I agree in principle, but I think a lot of it is also... I think schooling can be highly competitive. In, without a society itself necessarily being incredibly competitive, you get my word. But not in an ideologically capitalist society. Because there are people who say, and they're dead wrong, that capitalism does not have ideological content. But... The ideological content of capitalism is very strict meritocracy, which has its upsides, has its downsides, but one of the effects of very strict meritocracy is that forgiveness, so to speak, is an unacceptable system failure. That if someone fails, Basically, they have to suffer. That the only evil, really, is failure. That, depending on a society's attitude towards the role of work and the role of competition, you can have very, very competitive schooling. Even a very, very competitive job market. As long as that country also believes that being kind of a dumbass does not mean you deserve to suffer. What is? Yeah, I agree. It's horrible. You know, because it's sort of... There is nothing wrong with saying... The people doing a job should unambiguously be the best person qualified for a job. And it's a trade-off, of course. Because it ignores a lot of the self-actualization aspects of jobs. That's, that is true. But it's also sort of... If you want to be an astronaut, you should be highly qualified. They shouldn't be letting just any old idiot into space. And it's because, at least in theory, the point of ast being an astronaut is not personal self actualization getting to go to space. It's a public service in, you know, doing research, exploring. It's a thing that we want the best people doing, because the point is a public service. Which is, not coincidentally, why is... Oh... Reaganism, Thatcherism, one, Space programs have died out. 
Because that level of forward thinking done without an aim for immediate profit is something that the system is simply no longer capable of. But, as I was saying, it... Sure, it sucks that not everyone who can go to space can. But there are safety reasons for that, there are efficiency reasons for that, there are social reasons for that. It's... But that's very different from it being... There are only... Ten, only 10% 10 of the jobs are good enough, quote-unquote, in terms of benefits and time for someone to have an appreciable level of life. And if you're kind of stupid or kind of lazy, well, guess you suffer. That's very, very different. And that's what the West looks more and more like. That's what unabashed meritocracy running wild looks like. But I think, and this is me playing devil's advocate in part because I think war is bad, but the reason that in a lot of countries... Tap it with your here might be Chisoli's companion though. Doesn't seem to be any dangerous since like it got up there on its own. Palma doesn't steal any sign of Chisoli. That a few sort of absolutist type countries, and I'm sure you know what I'm referring to, you know, in generally considered to be accurate opinion polls of their citizens, consider their nations to be meaningfully and highly democratic, even if they don't have direct elections, because their philosophy on what basically the purpose of government office is, or what the purpose of seeking government office is, is very, very different. It's sort of, is it a matter of going in to sort of obtain celebrity and push forward a given agenda, or is it just, I'm good at doing paperwork, I'm good at talking, I'm good at bureaucratic negotiations, so I'm going to do the job where I'm needed, which is bureaucratic negotiations, talking, and paperwork. And basically follow the will of hello oh long time no see iron how are you doing having fun and not long see any son of jazoli hey travel with paimon so what do you think about what do you think about the movika capitano fight that's shivan's voice looks like you're someone next to her down quick jazoli it's been a lot of fun it's not perfect but nothing ever is but the exploration's real cool. I think it's some of the best exploration we've got from since Cimmerian Inazuma, which definitely have been the peaks of exploration in this game. Just got up here, so it's back already. What a coincidence. Let's get down there. Quite a coincidence. This means we should head back down. Was the Tibet we saw coming along? Don't run, don't hit us. Ooh, ooh, ooh. ooh. Uh-oh. In what sense? That Mavuika run, Mavuika won in the end, but also... Kavitano put up a good showing, too. So the Mount of the Tepet we saw. Her. I think, as someone who I presume is probably also kind of hyped for Kavitano, do you want him to come out in Notlan or in Sneznaya? Because there's actually some contention about it. People basically saying, okay, if he comes out in Notlan, that also means, you know, having another cool guy in a patch that, for better or worse, is going to be kind of disproportionate. But it also means that whatever Sneznaya's gimmick is, and if they put out Abyss Element in Sneznaya, then he wouldn't be able to get it. Yeah, exactly. It it was a really cool fight. I think... A lot of people came in with an external agenda. Yeah, I think. but I think in the end, especially if... I hope it isn't true, but there's a big chance that Kapitan ends up being her dad. But... I think you might agree or disagree that Capitano and Mavuika are probably going to end up teaming up in the end to fight the Abyss. Come here, you being naughty again. Because the entire idea is basically uniting everybody. They talked about a seventh hero. And I guess the assumption is Traveler, and that might also be true. But I don't think there's a way, especially given Snez9 and the fact that every single patch cycle has had us getting closer and closer in allegiance and alliance with the Fatui, there's no way that we don't end up having more significant cooperation with the Fatui. But 
And this, you're free to disagree, as this is a controversial topic. But I've liked in not line the fact that a lot of the female characters, we were talking about this before, have gotten a lot of serious focus, serious sympathy. Yeah, exactly. It's not a serious fight. Neither of them have access to their full power. Kapitan is injured, and Mavlik is sustaining the sacred flame. I think we're definitely going to see them both full power, and it's going to be really, really glazed. But I think there's about an equal chance that when we see them at full power, it's when, and maybe even because, they're cooperating instead of fighting each other. Then it might be a situation where it's a sort of synergy where, you know, it's only through working together that they can really let their full potential out. And then they just totally wreck the abyss. But I like that they went really deep into the characters of Mabuika and Milani and took them seriously in a way that I think, honest to goodness, they didn't really give to a lot of female characters before because, and I'm sure you've noticed this, but the Faustian bargain we've kind of had before has been, you know, fewer males than females, but the males get disproportionate story focus and honestly, the characters of the female, the sort of character of the female characters kind of suffers as a result. But it's just sort of... It feels like they kind of wrote out Kinich. Apparently, not to say too much about Weeks, but Oron and Capitano are going to get Jones next patch. Well, it... There's a good chance, I think, that we get the Gnosis and we take it to Sneznaya. I think there's a good chance there. But it... It makes me sad to think that they, they're kind of treating it as a zero-sum game. I would like if they just, you know, put out a decent enough balance of characters. Not necessarily 50-50, but it's just sort of... They, they have to limit themselves a bit. Yeah, it... Especially if the travel ends up being Shibalanke. People are conflicted on whether Shibalanke is going to be playable or not, and I think there's a good chance that Shibalanke, quote-unquote, ends up just being Pyro Traveler with the inheritance of an ancient name. Come here, being naughty again. Roar. It's a good story, you must be hungry, so I'll whip up something for you later. Wrong point, I'll come along in a sec. Roar. Make a good use of camera angles and emotes. I like it. You too, I was waiting for you at home and Nishko snuck out and ran off by herself. Just want to pick some flowers for our guests. Mm -hmm. She ended up getting lost on the way. Luckily, I managed to find her before long. Is she alright? Is she alright? Yeah, she even told us she was just starting to get better. But I will say that if Capitano ends up being Mubuika's dad, the chances of them ending up cooperating only gets higher, for better or worse. Still very weak, the shock and the cold wind certainly didn't help. She ended up with slight fever, I gave her some medicine, and now she's in bed. It, you mean descend her, or nothing a good night's rest can't fix? It is interesting that, and I think part of it is just Samara's connection to Conria, but just that we haven't heard anything about what Wimine has done in Fontaine and Notlan. To be fair, we also didn't really hear about what she did, or, well, Traveler Sibling, Abyss Prince slash Princess, did in Inazuma, Wiwe, Mondstadt. But it was interesting for them to bring up with Arnyaka, basically, the idea of retracing the sibling steps and to not really get into more of that in the future. She won't be able to meet you today, so it came all this way for nothing. Don't worry about it, we know she's still recovering. She haven't told us how serious her illness was. Her health definitely comes first, we're just dropping by to check on her. She's all better now, since she's doing well enough to run off on her own, too. Yes, and to run away from eating her vegetables. She's a fast one, that's for sure. She jumps over the chairs, hides under the table, and then runs all around the house. I can hardly catch her. Seeing how she is now, that's already enough. I really couldn't ask for more. Hey, cheer up. This is supposed to be a happy occasion. It's very nice of Will and Neshka to try and bring us flowers. Anyway, it's just only about the thing I was telling you before. Gift, alright, let's hear it. 
Yeah, what did you get us? Oh, it's a blaze gem inscription. Made from the purest room. That looks a bit serpentine. So it's almost completely resistant to erosion. The techniques used to make it are root an ancient name forging. So it's like a simplified version of an ancient name. I don't say that, why it might spite me. The process uses a few of the same techniques and materials. When I first made one, I didn't think it could serve any practical purposes, apart from the erosion resistance and the general aesthetic. Now, Shevin suggested using this crystal to make a special kind of ornament. Kome, ancient name, boys and inscriptions made by an ancient name artist that's engraved with words that never fade. The sales pitch, don't you think? Well, I... And we still don't know why the Abyss sibling is not counted as a descender. I think there's a good chance that the Abyss sibling was the fourth descender, but somehow reconciled themselves. But the issue with that is that descender status is literally power scaling. It's literally about having the power to rival a world, quote unquote. And that might mean that she gave it up for some reason. I think that's actually a good guess. But... If we're the fifth, well, actually, maybe, non-zero chance that if the, if the Abyss sibling gave up power that made them Descender level, maybe the reason they did that, maybe they needed to use it to awaken us or pass it on to us. But that raises the question of whether Descender status is simply chronological, maybe inherited like Archons, because, you know, maybe... Maybe that means they were also a fifth descender and we sort of took over their seat in an Archon kind of way. Maybe Archon or Sovereign kind of way. I don't know. But especially since my take, my speculation, my current educated guess on the situation is we know the first descender. Well, we're pretty sure. We actually don't know for sure because Encon and Mia talks about the first descender may be being Faunes. It says the first descender might have been Faunes. Which, interestingly enough, a lot of stuff in Enconomia possibly sort of foreshadows the idea of information being erased from Irminsul. The fact that the only place where we actually see Istaroth written down or said, because it's in a Ruby script, it's in a little text above, quote unquote, her. In Raiden's second story quest, when she talks about Makoto making the Sakura with a weird sort of time loop shenanigan. But she does not say Istaroth. Uh, that does not necessarily mean she knows who Istaroth is. I think there's a good chance that the statue of the omnipresent god is actually Istaroth. I think most people would agree with that at this point. But I also think... I also think that Istaroth was almost certainly erased from Irminsul because the only place, and I can bring that up in a second, let's still just you think, we only ever see her name written backward. Description really does make them special. Got a good eye for business and want to run your own store. Well, it's always boys and inscriptions really are special though. Word of mouth isn't always reliable as information gets passed along. It's incomplete, forgotten, sometimes even dis excuse me, distorted. And the words inscribed that this crystal will stand the test of time. The inscription will never deteriorate. The meaning will never get twisted. It's the perfect gift for a dear friend or significant other. Oh. <laughs> Could even pass it down to younger generations. Pushing the sales pitch, you're very persuasive. Now let's get one, we can earn wave our names on it, and then Swan's found her string out of her name as well. We our names will be together forever. Uh -huh. like Pam has already been hooked, it sounds a little too precious. Deserve it. You know, that does make me wonder. When we find the Abyss sibling, are they going to be playable in part two? I guess the real question is, if and when we find the Abyss sibling, are they going to become sort of a... When we find... Okay. When we find the Abyss sibling, are they just going to be a sort of swap option for our traveler? Or would we maybe have to roll for them? That's very, very possible. That's legitimate. The Anishka's birthday present. It's the least I can do to repay you. Chivin, I thought I told you. When you start acting shy too, so Zoli, it's a great gift. I know how much work goes in one of your boys' gem inscriptions. Well then, thank you both. I'll get ready as soon as possible, then I'll have you do the inscription yourself. 
This girl should be well by then. She'll be very excited to meet you. Good things are better with company. Might as well buy a few more as gifts. Well, let's not get ahead of ourselves. We don't even know how expensive that would be. Should we have enough travel funds? Oh, okay, okay. Sorry. Hold on, this isn't part of some scheme that could spend a little more, right, Shaven? You never know, you do look like you have some savings to spare. No, don't listen to that, Traveler. You'll not be losing all your mora. Ah, in any case, it's up to you. Roar. Oh no, it's the tip it was sore again. Click someone, stop it. Pump doesn't want to get run over again. Roar, there, there. Roar. Also, if you don't mind, Zola, I'd like you to help me with apparently Boy's Gem inscription. I dropped it when I was attacked or where the rope and clasp both snapped, so I haven't been wearing it. I tried to fix it myself, but I just couldn't get it to stay. Could you help? Just leave it to me. Make it as good as new. Let me see something. Okay. Thank you, Shaven, for going all that way, and it was nothing. We all just want Nishka to get better. You're right. Yuri? Maybe. Maybe not. Yingu, you believe in yourself? I'll feed you in just a second. I'll have Shaven contact you once everything is ready, Traveler. Maybe we'll even wind up in Nishka's birthday. We could even have a little party. It sounds great. We'll look forward to all the good food. We'll make sure we're ready to eat. Anyway, see you around to Zoe. See you. I hope Nishka gets better soon. Look after yourselves. Nishka is going to be so happy to meet you. Well... Oh, so that was real quick. So I guess Shiwanen is going to be Shiwanen is going to be real long, presumably because we don't have story quests really focusing on her. I mean, quests really focusing on her, like Milani got, and Kinich didn't, I guess. Oh well. But we can show off real quick one of the books and Konamiya. Yaki Koku collection. And. Which one was it? It was. Is it here? Somewhere they say it backwards. Tokoyo Okami. Yep. Yep. No. Ephotic Depths. Isteroth. Yep. We call her Kairos, or the ruler of the unchanging world. We dare not speak her true secret name, so I pen it here only once it in reverse. Hitorasi. And that... The fact that this is Isteroth backwards, a lot of people say, and I do agree, that it's because Isteroth was erased from Irminsul, but because it was basically a find-delete function... For basically, Tavat is a Word document, more or less. Any sort of obfuscations would not get deleted. And that's backed up by the fact that if you go into the Orchard of Paradenza, in the seats you can see a fragmentary representation of Rukadavada's name that does not get erased even after the end of Samaru's Archon quest. That basically... There, there are ways, and we've seen Ahita doing it by making the sort of parable summing up Scar's story of basically Earman soul proofing char characters and information. And that it was probably done with Isaroth. Okay. And we can get a little bit from World Exploration, and there's that. Which means I can do bounties for them now. How nice. Okay. All right, I think in that case, it might be good to move on to the Signs of the Canopy one, which should have a reappearance of a certain amusing friend of ours. But what is interesting is that since Act 3 is not available yet, we don't have Shunen showing up, which means that <sighs> Kinich will be out this version, but presumably the character will not show up until... Their part of the quest is unlocked. But I really do wonder. Once we get our six champions, I wonder what... 
the story quest will be like whether we'll get more tribal chronicles and just add more character portraits to that little segment which would make sense because the characters aren't central there's space for them to add more but it's interesting I do have a bit of resin to condense to do one quest with signs of the canopy too so lock them as well Come on, come on. Right for trouble and Kinuch's deal, but that's not done yet. But it... And I mean this when I say this. That... In the end, making one choice in terms of... There are limits to how much you can tailor any kind of work to one specific audience without fundamentally alienating other people. That is the unfortunate truth of things. Yeah, we could... Let's get more books for Kinich. But it's also a sort of... And of course it also means... That I'm inclined to sympathize with people who... But also... I guess I could actually put Nahida down here. Oh, I did not mean to do that. Hope that dis didn't disappoint anybody. Because they've got perma-burning on them, so I could actually keep Nahida in there, and it would work pretty darn well. But... Like, like I've said before, a, a big reason that... It's because you're an alien from Sicily. Sicily is actually a foreign planet. But as I was saying, you know, a lot of the reason that you get, and some of it is honestly probably the consequence of, of trolls that Mahoyo takes more seriously than they should, but in part the consequence of the fact that Chinese culture is one where and honest to goodness, I think the West isn't all that different, and it's part of why you get a lot of... I think toxicity is one way to describe it, but a lot of conflict, a lot of tumult, strain, conflict. Well, is just like I've said before, that... To really be sort of socially respected as a man in China, and frankly a lot of cultures, you need to basically marry a woman and have kids. But in a lot of countries, in China in particular, well, it, I like talking. And the source of stress was honestly limiting myself from talking more than it was the game itself. As long as I can yap about the subject... Pretty much anything can happen, but you know what, I I need to make this change a while ago, but the feather will go away, but I need to, okay, you're here right now watching, for the sake of your viewing experience, should I make my head view bigger at the expense of cutting off the sort of top part of the shirt? Yeah, but, and I've talked about this before, but... For a number of historical reasons, which are tragic and unpleasant, China has a very disproportionate gender ratio, and it means that for a lot of men, marriage is arguably not in the cards just because the numbers game doesn't work out. And because of that, a lot of... Okay, see if you like it. You know, that's why, basically, the function of, you know, games like this, the primary reason and method of engagement is just sort of a substitute for, you know, in interactions with, quite frankly, women that are fair. But it's also just a matter of expressiveness. But it's... You know, honestly, this is fine. 
The angle is actually pretty much perfect. It blocks out a little bit of this overlay. But, you know, screw it. It'll probably be different when I get the new one, if and when I get the new one anyway. This, this is actually pretty much perfect. I think the fact that it blocks a little of this is actually kind of cool. That's me. Yeah, do you like this? Do you like this? Is this better? I think it's cool. But as I was saying, I think... It's a fundamentally different viewpoint because they come from a different cultural reality. Because I'm glad you like it, because on one hand, it's just a part of the reason I like this game, is legit, or that I got into it, was legitimately just the fact that it had a mix, which meant that it appealed to both men and women, and therefore I could play it with my entire friend group, talk about it with my entire friend group. And now I can stream it to a mixed audience. But for that reason, that's also exactly why it had some limited appeal to some of those Chinese audiences of men. Because quite frankly, it was just, they didn't feel like they had any hope of ever really having female friends, of actually ever interacting with real women. So it was just, it was a matter of diving deep into the cult. It was their different situation. Oh, what? What about it? And it's... Yeah, it... Oh, no! What's the news? What's the news? Tell me, tell me. Excite me, excite me. Huh? I think... And I've said this before. But oftentimes, the people in most need of understanding and compassion... ...are the most loathsome. Yo! Huge, huge, huge. Woo! Woo! Celebration. How's, how's that going? How was it? Presumably the whole family was there. Did you manage to find another Hoyo fan? <laughs> another gamer weeb? Did you create the weeb power couple of everyone's dreams? Either way, that's really cool. I'm happy to hear that. It's awesome. But that... I wish you all luck. That, that's cool. But, okay, one, two, no, 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 one, two, three, a bite. A bark? What do you mean by bark? Okay. Come on, come on, come on. Okay. Interesting, interesting. Okay. So what are, what are you going to say now? That I need to retool myself again and become a dog? That's life. But it... And again, like, you know, I've said this a few times, but it's also... Oh! Oof! 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 <laughs> That's so dumb of me. <laughs> but as I was... Oh, also! Iron. I was talking to... Our Italian friend earlier, but I was having a bit of a stressful day, and I decided to. I'd heard before about Record of Ragnarok. You know about Record of Ragnarok? Because I wanted something to make me cry. Powerful manly tears, and it. It worked. You know, it, it's a bit cliche to talk about, you know, indomitable human spirit and all, but it was real cool. I'm sorry. My apologies. What am I, Ayaka? But it... Like I was saying... So we got one of them and... Oh, no, that... Moni's too good for this. This is kind of nasty. That's such... The lack of sustain on her does hurt. Ah, oh, wow. That... That's a legitimately movie tier. It's, well, it, I think, and it's fraught, and I try to be a person who discourages selfishness a lot of cases, but it, selfishness, 
you don't need to feel guilty about doing something that you want to do and that helps you, as long as it helps other people. Because I think, and this is, you know, the hopeless romantic in me, I think people are, by and large, far too eager to discard things, you know, personal fulfillment, personal joy, and share joy. Share joy. Because it wasn't a matter of, it wasn't just a matter of, you know, I want to be here with you. It was a matter of, you know, why throw away? You know, one of the few good things that people often get to experience in life, which is love and romance for... I mean, even if it's travel, you know, that's something you can do together. You know, generally speaking, most things in life are more enjoyable if you've got someone by your side. Yeah, exactly. It... I mean, if you're joking, that was one thing. I'm sorry, it's hard to detect sarcasm over text, but it's just... And I'm, I'm going to grandstand again. I'm going to grandstand again. But I think one of the most insidious ideas that has taken root in a lot of cultures, especially Western-influenced cultures, is a very unhealthy kind of individualism, which honestly isn't as much about sort of freedom and expressing yourself in as much as it is sort of a shame given to the idea of ever being reliant on people, ever needing people, wanting to be around people. It fundamentally denies that humans are social animals and need connection. It's... The best thing you can do, the best thing to aim for, is to do right by people, by all the people in your life. But that also includes yourself. You know, you're always a human too. And... You have, to, you have to put on your own oxygen mask before you can help others. If you completely burn yourself out, destroying yourself or other people, once you're all burned out, you can't help people anymore. You know, it's a matter of finding the right balance, but so is everything in life. You know, I think, and again, a lot of people, there is an aspect in which self-care discourse becomes an excuse for real, true selfishness. But it's important to treat yourself as a human being and to understand that healthy people help other people better. You, know, you, you can't light yourself on fire to keep other people warm. You know, you have to, you have to gather wood, so to speak. I hope that metaphor wasn't too hackneyed. But either way, I'm glad to hear that story. That's... Really, really touching. Fills me with hope in a number of ways, but it's... If you genuinely wish to do right and do right by another person, there's nothing wrong with saying, don't throw a good thing in your life away to them. Because like I've said, people are too afraid to acknowledge that they need other people. It's... The idea that needing other people is a sign of weakness instead of... Another whop... Thank you! God bless. Whopper flowers. But the idea that you know, needing other people is somehow a sign of weakness or some sort of betrayal of a social contract, it, it's insidious. And everyone is worse off for it. It... There... I believe it was Simone Weil. She was a 20th century philosopher. She wrote a book called The Need for Roots that I need to read more of beyond just excerpts. But one thing she said that really sticks with me is that duties are primary prior to rights. If that... A right is something you can only sort of exercise against other people, or sort of in concert, or with, sort of. You can, you can only really keep your property or your money or liberty from another person if there were other people. If you were all alone on a desert island, you couldn't really say, I have a right to life. 
a way, you know, no one can harm me because you're the only person there. You can't really, you cannot sort of uphold, restrict other people from you if there are no other people, but you would still have duties to yourself. You would still have a duty to take care of yourself, a duty to act in your own best legitimate pro-social self-interests. And it... Especially in an age where sort of a lot of cultures, economies are running into more conflicts, a lot of definitions of groups against each other. To define people against each other primarily instead of focusing on a shared humanity is something I consider to be very, very dangerous. That it... To focus on difference tends to reward the worst and most selfish people in society. I will say that. It... And sometimes people do have interests that oftentimes are somewhat opposed. But there's... A difference between saying, therefore we must battle to the death, figuratively or literally, and decide one party to accumulate all the surplus, so to speak, or you know, recognizing our obligations to each other and our shared humanity, the fact that all of us are people, we should figure out something that is legitimately fair to everyone involved in the situation. And it... And I think that's an unacknowledged dimension of a lot of political conflicts today, including and especially in the West, that some level of disagreement between diff people with differences is normal. It's inevitable. But that difference becoming conflict, especially violent conflict, is not inevitable in the slightest. And it's something that often has to be deliberately stoked by people with perverse interests. There's a big difference between saying these people can never ever get along and saying these people may have to compromise if you catch my drift. Either way, here we are. We're starting a new quest line. This is the lead up to Signs of the Canopy. Konnichi Hanuni. Are you here to help find the baby Saurians? Oh? And I'm Toba. Oh, that Aw, oh, cute. You must be the helpers that we've been waiting for. Well, it's nice to meet you too, but we were just passing through. But Uncle Sanka said he was going to send some of his friends over to help us. You sure he didn't mean you? And we don't know anyone called Sanka. So whatever this is about, it sounds like the wrong end of the stick. Wrong end of the stick. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's what I was talking before with sort of a balance between just complete non-interference and aggression. That, and I'm saying this as much for my own benefit as other people's, but the only way for society to survive and for people to grow is for people to learn to disagree, and I mean legitimately disagree, and to accept a real difference and acknowledge the importance of that difference Without finishing things with violence, aren't we been tricked, Huni? You should know that Glasses Guy was a con artist. What are, oh, Glass Guy's probably Anjo. What is this about the baby Saurians now? Time's running out. It. Anjo had better be playable. I can think of no more relevant character for an Abyss or Conria chapter. You know, they can. He's a, he's literally a shapeshifter. They could just slap down the pyroelectro model they have right now. Make him float up cliffs. Something like that. I was running out. It's like, who you don't worry? Why don't you tell us what happened with these baby swords, huh? It... Okay, and I I'm going to grandstand again. I'm going to grandstand again. But it was really cool how they had Jet and Valentine's Day and Enjo and White Day. But I think... There, there's a good chance that if Jet is playable, that Jet is going to be... And I think even saying retcon is strong, because honest to God, the whole deal with the Geo-Aramat guy 
Honestly, they could easily say that it was because he was, frankly, a chauvinist pig. And, you know, aggressively for it in an uncomfortable way, but just sort of... <laughs> honestly, you know, every single character. And honestly, I think that's probably the best way to do it. You know, every single character, for better or worse, is travel or sexual. You know, Jet basically is, I don't know, you know, all women but an exception for you. And, you know, whatever. Obviously, it's pandering, but, you know, cool. It's, there, there's a lot of discourse. I think it's interesting for the idea of, you know, an NPC or even playable character who is just intended basically be a lesbian. And, okay, cool, you know, this is an aspect of her character. You know, it's not her whole character. It's her character is mostly... I am a member of such and such tribe. I avenge my parents and seek to do justice in this desert. That's cool, but and also, okay, biological detail, she's a lesbian. But I think, and it's hard. You never really want to blame cast. But when you, when you look at discourse, there, there's a tinge to people when they talk about lesbian jet that's very much, you know, this is a hard fought victory. This is an act of spite. To drive away the evil boys who play this game and infest it and prevent it from being a WLW paradise or something. It's just sort of... It's, it's easy to understand where that came from and you want what might lead someone to behave that way. But almost any kind of bad behavior can be explained. But it's much harder to just it and i think when you get into a situation where you're basically saying good bad behavior versus bad bad behavior it's just and i i've talked about this before i'm gonna bring it up i think the most interesting writer on religion these days is a guy named david bentley hart and one of his interesting positions is the idea of purgatorial universalism which is basically and he's a genius. Absolute genius. And one of the best ways is just his writing style is powerful. He uses a lot of big words, but never in a way that shows off. And all of them make sense in context. He uses them because they're the best words for the situation. His writing flows naturally, but he, he's still very intellectual. Basically, nobody writes like him. But one of his unique positions, and he's... I think calling him in a crackpot in a way that isn't derogatory is probably the most accurate way to describe him. One of my friends from college actually talked to him a few times and was a big fan of his. But he was he's a purgatorial universalist basically saying that, you know, hey Christians, if you look at the Bible, the most accurate position is not, you know, sort of... There, there's nothing in the Bible that basically says that an eternal hell has to exist. And in fact, that details of it, especially if you take into account the, the, the Jewish portion of the Bible, the Old Testament, is basically the idea of basically eventual universal salvation. That the idea is more or less, you know, as time goes to infinity, eventually, but it's not the same as reincarnation. It's basically a pseudo-Catholic idea of purgatory. He's specifically orthodox. Basically, that the end state of the world is not sinners plunge into eternal hellfire or annihilated. It's the complete reunification, the restoration of it in individual harmony. And he is also, in a platonic sense, a, a monist, which is basically, monism is the idea, and it's very big in his religious perspective, that basically everything comes from the same thing, in the sense that th there's one sort of original principle, there's nothing that's created for evil. It's not a dualistic cosmology like, say, Zoroastrians or Manichaeism. There, there's, no thing, there's nothing that is basically meant to be evil. There's nothing for which evil is its good. You know, the triumph of good is not the destruction of evil, evil creatures, evil people. It is the establishment of true harmony between everyone and everything that exists. And to be entirely frank, and this is going to sound incredibly drastic, but to me it's true and highly confessional, but it is someone who feels very strongly, gets concerned heavily, I'd like to think about injustices, the righting of wrongs, and doing right by other people. One thing that that forces me to do, and I mean it the best way possible, is it means I can't abandon anyone. I can never unabashedly hate someone without reservation. 
because in my perspective, the inevitable ultimate good is everyone understanding everyone else. The resolution, probably through some kind of compromise, of this original harmony. You know, no matter how loathsome someone is, they exist for a reason. They are supposed to exist. And through, you know, maybe supernatural millennia of pain and suffering, you know, there's others, you know, sort of reformation, understanding the fact that everyone else is good is they're good too, the restoration of this harmony. It... Even people who I feel like hating, I have to forgive because everyone needs to exist. It means I need to forgive myself too. I can't, I can't burn myself up. I can't let myself go. Why am I so in my feelings playing Genshin? Good God. Who need don't worry, why don't you tell us what happened to these baby Saurians, huh? <laughs> It's been a lot of unrest in the tribe lately, and my dad Soren got injured. Her name's Nana. She has three little babies. After what happened to Nana, her babies were so scared that they ran off and hid. Really worried about them, so I decided to go look for them. But it... And that's part of why I... Like I said before, I try very hard to sympathize and understand everyone, even and especially people who are difficult to sympathize and under with and understand. Sorin wasn't the one looking for them. Dad's one of the elders, so he's busy getting ready for turn fire night. Who eats one's turn fire is the name of this one? Really important ceremony, more important than this anyway. I'm not really supposed to talk to her either, but I stuck out without telling him. Okay. I'm going to tell you what happened today and why I started reading Record of Ragnarok. The reason why is because there was a guy in a server I was in who I was getting in constant arguments with. It's just... When I was talking earlier about gender balance, about the way the story was done, about the way gameplay was done in this game, that was an argument I was having with that guy. And... What I found out, because I had no idea, and this has gone on for weeks, I found out that that was the guy who I had commissioned to make art for me. And I had one thought, my immediate thought was, holy crap. If I had known that he was that guy, I never would have gotten in arguments with him like that. And then my second thought was, well, that's really screwed up. Why are you... You know, you're openly saying to yourself, yeah, I'm going to get in arguments and just unleash hellfire on people if they're not useful to me. And I'm going to hold back and people please and suck up if I think it's going to be useful. And I was just, it forced me to take a real step back and just think, you know, may maybe there is a fundamental problem with the way I engage with the world. Maybe I do need to be nicer to myself and to other people. I told him outright that, because he's popped in a few times, that I would literally give him, I would be willing to quit and literally just tell everyone, the five people who watch me now to watch him instead. Because, I mean, it's, It's a weird topic. I don't know. But it... For a second, I was very willing to just... And it's what I did on Minecraft with Dom. I tried to blow up everything I had and just destroy myself as penitence. You know, to try to go for self-punishment. Far above and beyond anything that was ever necessary for no real reason it yeah well it i think i need to be nicer to everyone because there's there's one thing 
And I will say, tough love is love. That if you want to, again, main re restore the original army, quote-unquote, that means telling people when they're wrong in a compassionate way so that eventually, you know, all bad behavior is corrected and everyone exists in harmony. But it's also, that's very different from picking fights for its own sake. Didn't think it would take very long, but then the guy ran into it made us tell loads of stories and wasted so much time. It was so selfish, he doesn't have a heart. It's got to be Andrew, right? It's all right. Yeah, don't let him get to you. We're here now and we'll help you. So we care a lot, don't we, Traveler? We do, sure do. So the baby Sorens are by. It... If you're familiar with Augustine... You know, at this point, I may as well say it. In college, I majored in economics, political science, and theology. The third one I picked up kind of on a whim because it was a good department. And I found the topic interesting. And... I read Augustine, actually not in that class, there's a little bit of Augustine in the theology classes, but actually in a political science class. And one of the interesting things that was brought up, maybe not there, but a lot of people talked about Augustine there. Should be all our match to find their tracks, it seems like they're hiding on the cliff, leave it a trail of pine on me, it shouldn't take long. Was that, and there's a lot of Augustine that I disagree with in part because there was an Augustine that David Bentley Hart disagrees with. But basically, it he basically said and part of it was a sort of very naive theodicy theodicy is basically it has to do with the problem of evil it's basically sort of how much of the world does god control you know does god will natural disasters does god will disease you know, what is God control? What is punishment? What is reward? Really well, thanks so much, Sir Traveler, Miss Paimon. And one of the things he said was basically, some of you gotta be careful on the cliffs though, they're really seeping, grow up some trouble climbing them. Monsieur's visitor from Quetzalan, Yuponki's turn fire. So Yuponki is... I believe... Kinesia's ancient name. Who needs that? The very swords are on the cliffs, so let's find a way up. Okay, so we gotta switch in, because we don't have Kinesia yet. Good luck and stay safe while we ride here. And you. Oh, he has nothing to say. But as I was saying, basically, that one sort of evil that a lot of people commit, for lack of a better term, and that they often ignore, Pogi, is that they'll basically allow people to continue doing things that harm themselves and others. Not out of real love, but out of fear of the consequences to themselves that they speak out. The Mountain King. Baby Yungthosaurus. And that itself is... You know, it's sort of an evil... Evil through an action kind of thing. And again, even though I would not consider myself much of an Augustine person... I think it's, it's a very good point, that... And Martin Luther King Jr. made a lot made a lot of hay about that too. That, you know, there is such a thing as a peace that is unjust. Sort of if peace is maintained by ignorance of evil, by the continuance of evil, by suppression and oppression, and then that's not really peace at all. It's violence and evil that is simply rendered invisible for the sake of convenience. Too high, I'm scared. Oh. And so how am I going to get up there? Presumably around here? Okay, let's see how we can climb up. Investigate. That said, they can do a little wall run. So that's how we're going to do it. So they're showing off all of the abilities there. And Oh, Asia's here. Pochi. Pochi the Rock. What are you doing here? Oh, whoa. Is this a wolf? Found them, but wait. What's that other? Ah, uh how? -huh. Well, if it isn't the gruesome Tusum who went their way. Tusum Akadio. He said evil dragon, maybe he said something bad. Serving circle of friends, so all struck from the last time we met. That'd be why he hastily scrambled up here to pay respects to the new sauce. Suppose we can't blame you, such as the spell that our majesty casts on our minions. It's still crazy that this guy is just Naruto. Especially, I would not, it would not surprise me the fact that his tail is in this spiral. 
was also part of that too. What is he gonna say, Date Bago? Very well, you hidden so there's no choice. The only dragon lord, Kuhu Ahau, shall grant you the honor that you seek. Come back and kiss our feet! Well, that sounds. We don't need to let Kinji's sidekick, but the heck are you going out about? So man should be even more annoying than the last time we met. Kinich? Yeah, Kinich is Sasuke. It's basically meant to be one big sort of Sasuke Naruto joke. Sounds like you're going sidekick, we're the dragon supreme, sovereign ruler of the nation of flame. So how do you know that last time Renato Kinji just earned his pudding on her back? He would have not received a single word of mercy. Yeah. Uh, well, he's also Shiro. Oh, come on, you talk big, but Kinich crew has you under lock and key. Over it, Sovereign brings you to this mountaintop. So little munchkin, what you're doing up here? You know, let's have some fun. Let's play along just to see how what he does about it. Mm, that's more like it. So they knocked the mana. You must know our humble servant begged us to investigate an abyss incident near Hootsalon, chose to grant his request. <clears throat> I think in the end, it's like what I said. That this situation may have been quote-unquote peaceful, but it was peaceful because of problems not being addressed you don't need to do anything the person who did something wrong was me <laughs> i need to take a good long look in the mirror is what's happened but as i was saying i try to do right by people Abyss incident, Abyss in the King. See this little wizard, its mother, a medium sized wizard, came under the influence of abyssal power. In her confusion, she attacked my servant's tribe, then I sailed her own offspring. Ooh. Yikes, so how is she doing now? She was but a lowly bug fighting against the power of the abyss. Actually, she's departed for the night. Oh. She's dead. Such a fragile creature, apparently, she entered her struggle by leaping from a cliff. Thing from a cliff. My dear anemic flying ant. Say cat was is actually fine something there. It's out the questions your head may be, please keep them to yourself and wipe that absurd expression off your face. With the almighty dragon with Kuhu Ahau, not a wish granting fountain. Anemic flying ant, you you just wait. So wait you can buy the ugly nickname game. Well it's in part it's I don't want to think about them writing him out. Though to be fair, the second Metzli Quest did not have much to do with Milani anyway, but Milani did not appear until the third part of the Travel Quest line anyway, so it's very. It's probably sticking with that precedent, because the third one is basically a story quest. Then we sent us a faint abyssal energy. Evil source must be more open nearby. They are well hidden. If you encounter any suspicious outlanders, be sure to give them a robust interrogation. Suspicious outlanders? Wait, are you mocking us? Huh? How dare we cast aspersions on your ruler, heathen? Just lucky that our servant has such a vile taste in friends that the ones would beat you black and blue and then purple and black again. Yeah, if you're not here to kiss my feet. Well, what I. I like this hat. Uh -huh. What is interesting is that this was the hat that they use in that sort of not line lore preview event from a couple versions ago, that one really ridiculous boss run event, rush event. Kiss my feet and get on my side, don't impede the work of the Amal and Dragon Lord uh -huh. Naruto would not people tell people to jump off cliffs without a bungee rope. The potty mouth on that guy. How on his funeral theory is still good to know what the abyss threat huh? Wasn't expecting that. Let's not get sidetracked, we take care of Huni's request first. Okay, and... Use that to get down, and... Okay, grapple a little. Here we are. Toba and Huni. I... Maybe I don't know enough. I'd like to say no while you're back already, that was so fast. 
It wasn't real. I'm so glad that the babies are alright. Thank you both so much. Now we can finally go home and stop worrying about them. You're welcome, piece of cake. Not from that one, right? Because her clothes look different from ours. Ours? Must be tired after all that climbing. You should come take a rest in my house. Yeah, please come. I promise you'll get a big signs in the canopy welcome. We love having guests and are really nice people, not like glasses, could I? By the sounds of it, Glass Scott wasn't from not one either, right? Uh-huh, well, his clothes sure weren't. You know what? Now that I think about it, there's something really fishy about him. Really, maybe he was the suspicious outlander that Aha mentioned. Can you tell us a little bit more about him? Well, seen his room in her. Sure, if you're interested, let me think. How did the conversation go again? Oh, well, he looks exactly the same. Surprised that they didn't change him up at all. Please, Mister, I've told you so many stories already. When are you going to help me find the baby Saurians? Just one more story, one more, I swear. Why don't you tell me more about that ball of fire? I heard that there was a huge transparent ball of fire that used to burn 500 years ago. A thousand years ago, maybe even further back than that. You know, I realize that... I'm not sure. Let me just see. Angel. His voice. What is his voice? Hmm. Where is his voice? JPVA self. Yama Satoshi. And the Pyro Abyss Lector itself. Voice actor. Yeah, 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 okay. So that is the same voice as just every single Pyro Lector. Which is really funny because presumably that means, you know, maybe every Pyro Lector we fight is Enjo. Or maybe they just all have the same voice. I don't know. It'd be funny if he could just bilocate like Padre Pio or something. And we have to fight two Pyro Lectors in the Abyss. Which is the dumbest thing they ever make us do. In Turn Fire, that's where the ancient... Oh, because it's turning around? Maui Po Trimfire comes from. Mm -hmm. Oh, well, so it was the origin of an ancient name. That's impressive. Uh huh, there's a story behind every ancient name. Legend goes that the Trimfire first appeared in the era of the Grand Alliance. It was used by the tower Ushkan. The city in the northwest of Nawan is Sochika Nawan. He was the king of air. He was the king mentioned in Unfinished Reverie too. To rule over no one and oppress anyone who opposed him. Turn fire is different from normal fire. If you get set on fire with it, if you're a horrible burning pain from behind you, then you won't die from it right away, and whatever you do, you must turn back to silica. It sounds like Lot's wife turning into a pillar of salt. Wow, what happens if you turn back? As soon as you turn around proof, you get burned to a crisp. Forced to look at her? Well, good girl and Jane. Yeah, it's one thing to singe someone's clothes, but burning people away, that is a big no-no in my book. Bad joke. What? How nasty is it to burn someone from behind and not even let them turn around to look? Ushkan really was an evil tyrant. It's shocking behavior. If you want me to guess, eventually a valiant girl came to save the day. It's how these stories usually go. You would guess Uncle Glasses. Seems like you really know your stuff. The hero is called Yaponki. He's the ancestor of our tribe, and he wielded that four star craftable Earthshaker Claymore that Kinich is good with. Mm -hmm. Yaponku is friends of Oshkan the Tower and also Shibalanke, the first Pyro Orkan. <laughs> Shibaranke Sashino Injin. Yeah, the first Pyro God. Fire God. He was working as an ordnance officer for the Grand Alliance at the time. So maybe that's why Kini Chuar has literal cannonballs. He didn't like how Ushkan was such a cruel tyrant. So he stole the turn fire and threw it at the Ushkan's army. The soldiers couldn't defend against it and they all got turned to ash. That's how our ancestors set our people free, but just as he was about to leave the city, he thought he heard Ushkan calling out to him from behind. He caught him off guard and as he turned around to look. Thank you so much. But Oshkan wasn't there, all he saw was a city burned black, an army in ruins. The giant flames are reaching up to the sky. Into the sky. Ooh. Oh, did he burn too? Or. A split second later, the flames he saw burst out from inside his eyes and swallowed him up. 
All it took was a single glance. As soon as he looked back, he was a burn to a crisp. The question is, was this the price he paid for stealing the turning fire? Or the price of turning back? Nobody knows the answer, but the fire that consumes Yupanki burned more fiercely than any other. Burned for a hundred days until it burned a hole right through the ley lines. So maybe that's why the Night Kingdom exists. And the ley lines were destroyed. The, the flame dropped into the death of the Dark Night Kingdom, yep, where it still burns to this day. Grown-ups say that it lights up the path that leads to the next life, but for the dead to be reborn, they have to accept the flames and be purified by the fire first. What is this? The Dainichi Mikoshi? It's like a fun look back at your life where you have to answer for everything you did. And here, that's the story of Yupanki's throne fire. What a fine parable indeed. So is it true? Is it really possible to find this fire in the Night Kingdom? I don't know, I think it's just a story. By the way, I assume this name has been passed down in your tribe ever since. Sure has, it went to Burkina, the year that we celebrated and turned fire night. That was 500 years ago. He was mentioned in Bekwabur, and he was the friend of Kongamato, who is the big fat Yumkasor we fight as one of the bosses. Yeah, and now it belongs to Kinich, so we often call Maoipo Kinich to fire. Kinichi. Huh? Aha, uh -huh, Uncle Glasses, that's enough stories. But can you please go find the baby stories? Perhaps like you promised. Well, I would, but doesn't the legend of the Trinfire teach us not to look back? It's not going to trudging up the past. Tell me more about this Kinich guy. One more story, I swear, starting now. No, careful, Toby. You're dangerously close to cursing me out right now. To tell, we can't have that. Cursing's for grown ups only. Uncle, you better not be trying to trick us, or the Trinfire will get you when you die. Ooh. How would it get me if I'm inside of Nama? Class says, Megami Oji-chan isn't from here, you know, unlike you. Ominous. Huh. Wait, is that? Oh, the Traveler senses. Yep, he sensed us. Oh, he saw us. Traveler sense. All right, kiddos. Kodomo Tachi. I'm a man of my word. Two of my friends are on the way. And uh, yeah, I'll help you order my bags of the hats. Why, they were looking for us. Some of Futari, those two. Work them like dogs, okay? That's what they're here for. Don't go easy on them just for my sake. Trying to force us to. Some more time, really? Well, first, can you tell us your name? You know, you know, maybe that's what happens. Maybe one of the guys we get in that one is just Enjo. I'm coping. We meet at the Sanka. Meet at the foot of the cliffs so beneath the peaks called Sanka. Which literally just means below mountains. It's a Japanese one. Oh, actually. Well, in the Japanese we said said Yamashita. It would be. But I wonder how his transformation would work. Maybe on burst? Yamashita. Well, Night Soul is probably kind of abyssal, so that could work, maybe? The peaks. It could honestly be really interesting if they actually expanded on Numusia and Night Soul when they made full sort of abyssal and imaginary quantum mechanics. Because it would... It would be interesting. Yeah, because the kanji... You know what, I'll send it in chat. The kanji they used for that were... It was this. Which one are just... The first one is mountain, the second one is down or below. And mountain can be yama. Down can be shita, so yama shita. But that's one reading. Other readings would be san for mountain and ka for below, so that would be sanka. So it's interesting that the English shows... A different reading than the Japanese, though. But that would raise the question of when they get... They probably had to translate the script from Japanese, because they translate from, from Japanese, which is itself is translated from the Chinese, probably without getting any voicings and readings. Because sometimes, when they've differed, they've changed things eventually. For example... Kazari changing to Hanachiro Shato and Iwakuro Doke changing Iwakura Michimitsu changing to Iwakura Koin. The one guy you fight at the end of all those samurai killing quests, that side objective in Inazuma. Sanka. 
Seriously? You don't believe me, Tyrannosaurus? 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 He's right behind you. He's right behind me, isn't he? But, so I wonder if they'll change this to Yamashita eventually. Oh, where? Doko do oh, so you can run off. Wait. Ojichan ga inai. Uncle isn't here. You're definitely a fishy character. It sounds like he was digging for info about the ancient names. Yeah, and not only that, but he betrayed us too. He'll pay for this. All he got out of us were some stories, though. It's the worst that could happen. Mm, Traveler, maybe we should go to Kinuch about this. All house says he's investigating it, but he's a bit of a loose cannon. Probably shouldn't take him at his word. Oh, you know Kinuch. Oh, not very well. well. Yes. But we have met him before, and one time we had a meal together. Man, I'm so jealous I've never even spoken to him. He's so cool. He's a Saurian hunter, and he has a really awesome ancient name. Me neither. I don't think my dad really likes him, though. He always tells me to stay away from him. Probably because that little creep he always hangs out with. He's nasty, and he's so full of himself. Everyone hates Aha. Oh, the creepy pal so cool, ho Aha. Yeah, we have the pleasure of meeting him, too. He sure loves pushing people's buttons. You're gonna hate me for saying this, but... Kinich Aha. You know, Kinich and then Aha is the name when the two are combined of one of the Aztec sun gods. It's also one of the voice lines that Quetzalcoatl and Quetzalcoatl and FGO uses when she uses her super attack. She does a big Ucho Libre flying slam and says Kinich Aha impact. There's your fate mentioned for today. Suffer. Exactly, I don't know why Kinich partnered up with him. Why didn't you pick me instead? Uh huh, Huni, look how late it is. We've been out way too long. We'd better get home now or we'll get yelled at. Yikes, you're right. Okay, well, this path leads to our settlement. If you decide to visit, remember, come to my house. Cute. Aww. If there's anything you need, my dad can help get it for you. Hope to see you soon. Aww. Very energetic. Gotta run. Bye for now. Matana. That's done with that first one, which was a little longer just because of the talk. Well, maybe one day you'll develop Stockholm Syndrome. Okay. Let's check some of those then. Another quest. Did that one. Who's on? In the process of helping Tuni and Toba find the baby swords, you discover by chance that a secret plot seems to be underway orchestrated by the powers of the Abyss. Oh, Dust to Dawn and Bianca Koku. Right, exactly, because it's Angel. Among the signs of the Academy, a quest that concerns the tribe's honor, even its very future, is quietly brewing away. Okay. The funny thing with Stockholm Syndrome, and you may have heard this already, is that the reason that Elder Trinidad's home... Interesting name. And that does not say. It's complicated, but it's actually good. I maintain that. It's not for everyone, but it's good. Thanks. Cool. Oh, okay. One, two, fight, and one, two, fight, and where is the last one down there? Come on, come on. Got that dragon all the way down there, which, that we could. Toss that to blow you up, and there we go, cool. Drops her down there. Come on. Okay, so we should go over here then. But as I was saying... The thing with Stockholm Syndrome is that the reason that the captives sy sympathized with the bank robbers was not because they were socially, con they were conditioned psychologically by the robbers. It's because they just hated banks that much and legitimately understand it why the bank robbers would rob the bank. Seriously. That's the actual facts of the situation. It's kind of like... When a lot of people talk about the bystander effect, 
they often talk about the story of a woman named Kitty Genovese who was stabbed to death in New York. And the story that they give is that she was stabbed to death on an open street with a bunch of people watching, just walking by and doing nothing, which is not true. She was stabbed to death in an alleyway. People suck. But if you're looking to try to prove that people would do that level of bystander, that's not the story you want to use because the facts of the case simply are not correct. You can the signs of the camp. You meet the young girl you helped before. Who knew? Story quests. Okay. Who are we going to meet next? Huni and Trinidad. Huni. Huni, what were you thinking of going out by yourself? Didn't you know how dangerous it is? When I doubt all. Okay, dangerous. So we're gonna tell the homie and we met some kind strangers who helped us end. Kind strangers? What made you so sure they were kind? Hmm, I suppose they had kind stranger written on their foreheads. Yeah, actually they did in big bold letters. To talk back to me, the Mountain King problem still hasn't been solved. But what I do have, I lost you too. No danger for you to dinner for you tonight. There were good people, Dad. Dinner or no dinner? Hello again, Huni. Mata, Aitana. To meet you again. It's Miss Paimon and Mr. Traveler. Dad, it's them. They're the ones who helped me, and I promised we'd take care of them. They came to visit. Oh, so you're the kind stranger as well. Tatsune, Asashito. I'm Trinidad, and you may help my daughter today. Is there anything you need, just ask. As an elder of the sons of the canopy, I've got some influence around here. No, I trust that you're sensible people, and you're better than to take advantage of their host's generosity. Oh, so maybe he's just a suck up. Maybe. Bad. Just happened to be passing by, so we went in her hand. It was nothing. Of course, all we asked for is one million more. Yeah, just helping you neighbor. We're not looking for anything in return. He's lucky we're nice. Oh, well. Oh, well, let's hope so. Dad, please, they're not bad people. They've eaten the same table quiche before. Be nice to them. What you shall need? Go home and tell that in that day. Be nice to them. You need to wait. So, yeah, but for that two mysterious travelers from far showed up the state in the sacred flame, are they you? Yes, I'm one of them. And by mom's do this. So, stay or I'm not It's me. Uh, uh huh. I do apologize for what's been going on in our tribe lately, yeah, and I suppose the pressure must be getting me. I can't believe I was so rude to you. I feel ashamed. So, we got off on the wrong foot. Can we start over? Goodness. Uh, now we're talking. Don't seriously go. Don't worry about it. Already forgotten. We're just happy to see who got home safe and sound. Just arrived. I take it. It would be an honor to give you a hero's welcome tonight. Careful now. That's quite an about face. Heard that kind of thing. We a spontaneous combustion around these parts. Is the turn fire. Come off. Save the VIP treatment if you need a favor. Let's talk. Ah, oh, my dear traveler, you're very perceptive indeed. When inside now, Huni, Dad's got some important business to discuss. Okay, after look after Mr. Traveler and Miss Pamon. Pamon on the HM. They're special guests. Well, we'll hear you out, but we can't make any promises that we'll be able to help. Mm -hmm, this is a matter of utmost importance. Please allow me to explain. For many years, our tribe has celebrated the Twin Fire Night. It's a traditional ceremony among the signs of the canopy in which we remember our ancestor Rukina and his companion Kongamata the Mountain King, who is still alive and one of the world bosses. Oh, and he was fat even then! <laughs> well fed. Well fed. Rukina was a hero who bore the ancient name Mawipo, turned fire. And Kongamato, and this spear is also the one that Kachina uses, I think, in the cutscenes, which I think will be rollable next patch. Kongamato is a powerful Yunkus warrior. Together they fought against the Abyss. Rift Hounds, Electro Vector. They were victorious, but it came at a great cost. Burkina paid with his life. The Mountain King survived, but was contaminated by the Abyss, and he remains in hibernation to this day. Normally, oh, Yunkasaurs never live longer than a century. It's possible that the Abyssal power is responsible for his unnatural long lifespan. Wait, so he's still alive? We didn't see him contaminated when we fought him. Oh, probably not really story related. That's right. 
The mountain king is a living symbol of our glory, but even this glory comes at a price. The abyssal power inside of his house is sensitive, and when it is disturbed, he awakens and flies into a blind rage, attacking anything that moves. So besides the ceremony, another important part of Trimfire Night each year is cleansing the abyssal power inside the mountain king so that he will remain sound asleep. However, abyss-related incidents have been on the rise and not one lately, as I'm sure you're both aware as that as a result, it's become increasingly difficult to give the mountain king in hibernation. Only five months have passed since the last turn of our night, is already showing signs of instability. Has he woken up again? He has, we managed to contain the situation by performing a makeshift ceremony right away. If there was a close call, he could reawaken at any moment. Also, he attacked and wounded my companion Nana during the ceremony. In the disorder, she being condemned by the abyss as a result. So, presumably, that's why she went on a rampage and died. You heard such a tragedy, we're really sorry for her loss. Sa, so, yes, and not it wasn't the first. Tell me about it! Anyway, right now we're preparing for an exceptional Trim Fire Night ceremony, and we need to find a suitable flame bearer from what I've heard about your adventures. I believe you'd be perfect for the role, don't you already have a flame bearer in the tribe? Or does Kini choose something different? Of course, plus he's a bona fide hero who's inherited the Trim Fire Malipo name. Oh, you mean Kinich. Malipo. Malipo. Oh, is that Swahili? Oh, in Swahili it means either payment, maybe repayment, or revenge. Oh. Squeak, squeak. Okay. Maybe that, that might be because you put on mice instead of flip-flops. You put on squeak-squeaks instead of flip-flops. And Kinich, yes, he's the one, a hero worth his weight in gold, and unfortunately for us, he's all too aware of that. No prize for guessing what he said when asking the host to turn fire night outside of the annual schedule. An exceptional ceremony off to charge an exceptional price. That's where no other concept exists in that boy's brain. Waste his predictable fork over the moon. He's all yours. Sounds like a professional adventurer to me. I'm not the one to usually talk about people behind their backs, really. But I'm convinced the boy I've not hit on the head took a wrong turn today. It shows he had an ancient name to him. You ever heard of a hero's mantra as what's your asking price? Sounds like Tingle's Rosy Ruby Land. No one dog get me started on the insufferable ah how he hangs around with. It's his God's gift to mankind, pompous fool. Ah how Yatsu. What the maga wa doi? Bad head. The problem has to agree on that last part. Anyway, the fact is, the ceremony can just as easily be done without him as long as you find someone else. Besides, your team to seem like much better cats. So what do you think? So what you're saying, not only are they squeak squeaks, they're not even good at being squeak squeaks. That's a double whammy. Tell me what I need to do next, what's in it for me, why don't I try to talk some sense into Kini Trio? There's so only a few ways left before the ceremony, we can't afford to waste all the time we have a negotiation with him. Much prefer if you would consider taking his place, I'm right, I guess there's no other choice. Wonderful, I can't thank you enough, who knew was right about me? Your kindness and your hearts. Come with me to the other side of the mountain, I'll bring you up to speed on each step of the ceremony. It's experienced warriors, I'm sure you'll pick it up in no time. Hmm. That's Yuponki's turn for Act 2, a hero's right. Yeah? You're all in a hidden cave. Wait. Or... True curses who dares insult the great Kubo Aha behind his back. Oh, so he found Enjo. Oh, great Kubo Aha, bless you. Shoot your filthy mouth, mouth of worthy abyss. Your putrid words defile the air we breathe. You make the Imali dragon what Kubo Aha sick to the stomach. Speaking as a member of the Abyss World, it's music to my ears exactly the kind of reaction we're going for. On a personal level, I gotta say, it's pretty hurtful. Never have we heard such a breeze and blustering from... Secretly? Once a second person knows that it's no longer a secret. 
raising the blustering from someone who has interest from death up your four eyes by spitting your face spitting sounds. Oh, Care about that, I'm at a loss to explain. How do I manage to place those trippy and cheerful? You know, I guess it's some kind of powerful magic. But I digress, Mr. Kinich, I admit it. You, sir, are a legendary hunter. Still, the only reason you caught me is that I was reluctant to run away. See, I'm very interested in the lore of your tribe. Okay. Is that it? Are you intrigued to know what it is about you guys that prompted a visit from the abyss? Hmm. It's the extreme sports! The other day, I narrowly avoided getting hit by a very group so we just leafed off a cliff. I think you call it bungee jumping. Where I was very impressed, that is what I call embracing the spirit of adventure. Look, I even did a painting inspired by the brave for freedom and the signs of the canopy. The scum sucking swan! I swear if you go bungee jumping, I'll be without a rope. Head first off the, off, off the tallest cliff, a band of hunters on your tail, and nowhere left to run. Okay. Enjoy sleeping. I'll see you later. You can leave it on. You know. Here's the secret two people can keep. The number will stay up if you leave it on. You can. If you mute the stream itself, it ticks the number down. If you mute the tab, it doesn't. Have you been falling asleep the other times? You know, we, we need to take every single advantage we can get. <laughs> it's a dog-eat-dog -dog world out here. But I'm a suspect waiting for you on the ground. Say that, but I got the sense that Mr. Kini isn't going to take my life right now. On top of that, I'm tired of spying on you from afar, so why don't we don't just negotiate a comfortable operating distance that works for both of us? Mm. I've heard that the most important thing in human relationships is to respect each other's boundaries. It's not about confidence, it's about ruthlessness. If you don't want to do it, that's fine. It's more ethical that way anyway. Either way, I'm glad I could help put you to sleep, whatever that means. Hope you can hope you can get some rest. Say Mr. Kinich? Mm -hmm. Or you can tell me what it is you're really after. What? Nami? And then I'll name my price. Oh, you'll work for the Abyss now. Or not? So do they teleport us up onto the mountain? No, we have to go to the mountain. That means Let's get a Yumkasaur and actually climb up. Okay. And another one, or there we are. Another one up there, and I guess we have to run up the wall now. Okay, good enough. So, thanks. You can use this for some degree of pseudo flight. Cooldown's annoying though. But I think Kinich can do that indefinitely, right? Maybe. I don't know. We're going to the mountain. And you know what? Let's blast him. Well, it... You know, I have purpose now. I can, I can say that I did a good thing. I managed to make myself of some use. Okay. Boom. You can go. I'm not gonna stop you. I was joking, mostly. Do not destroy yourself for my sake. That would only make me sad. Do whatever you personally need. Oh, one of those pylons? Well, the abyss contamination is back. No surprises there. No doubt that explains the Mountain King's recent activity. If there's torches over there. Those are sacred flame offshoots. Not green, though. Request from the stadium of the sacred flame. Obtain the power of the pirate or god. They're saying that the sacred flame and the turn fire are the same thing. <laughs> ah, for ceremonial purposes, at least, sending someone to the night king to retrieve the legendary turn fire isn't exactly an option. More to the point, though, the sacred flame is able to burn away abyssal filth, so that's why you use it in the ceremony. 
Found trust are basically we just need to clean up the filth with the sacred flame. It's one part of it. Yes. The complete ceremony. Okay, well. You could always just close the eyes, close your eyes and listen to me yap. It's not like I'll stop talking, you know. It's my one strength. <laughs> but ceremony is a bit more complicated than that. Of course, the flame bearer must collect a kindling of the sacred flame from the starting point. Is a grappling hook to fly up into the sky and light each of the sacred flame pillars. Then we must go down into the canyon all the way to the cave where the mountain king slumbers. Letting braziers in the final altar along the way. The most skilled flame bearers can accomplish this without all of this without touching the red ones. As much as I hate to admit it, King Nietzsche is capable of this. Oh, well, he can do all that flying without ever falling to the ground. So can you, Paimon. So we have we have achieved our desired balance. Successfully compromised. I will. Fulfill my assigned role with pleasure. Of course, Pamon can be much harder for you guys. Oh, well, don't worry, it's not a requirement of the ceremony. If you're allowed to touch the ground, the only thing you're not allowed to do is turn back. Turn fire. The flame gear must always keep moving forward. You can't skip a pillar and then come back to it after lighting the next one. Do so would be to disrespect our ancestors. So, what actually happens if you do turn back? Sure, the fires don't just go out. Um, well, if you're not careful, you might get burned. What about today, then? Does the same rule apply? Oh no, don't worry, today is just a practice. The order doesn't matter. Just need to take the sacred flame, cleanse the filth, and go light all the braziers. Are you ready? Let's begin. I'll repeat the key points again. Gather the candle, and cleanse the filth, and light all the braziers. I'll wait for you at the end. Subethema seca. All the sacred flame. All purifying sacred flame. Smaller flame split from the sodium. The sacred flame intended for the turn fire net ritual. Conducted by the signs of the canopy. They contain a blessed power that dispels the darkness. Interact with the whip braziers to obtain the sacred flame's protection. And collect and throw flame granites, which we haven't really done much of yet besides that one quest, cause explosions that will scatter the abyss's power. Ah, interesting. Yeah, because all of... All of the dragons, all the swords have a bit of pyro in them. It is interesting that the Kukasaurs are red and presumably kind of pyro, especially. I mean, they do fly, but they don't use animo attacks. Though they're presumably associated with the animo tribe. Well, under the protection of Sacred Flame, we can approach and eat an amulet brazier and ignite it. Okay. Cool mechanic. You know, maybe, maybe I take it back. Maybe they are trying to make Kinich somewhat relevant. Complete the mission and... How long is that going to last? If we get them taken down or abyssal filth over there, burn it away with the sacred flame. You know... The, the truth of this world... N not a one of us can admit when the other one is right. Neither of us. I'm going to be stubborn. Okay. This will ignite it from a distance, too, it seems, interestingly enough. How close do we have to get? Well, that made us turn back. There we go. Ignite the braziers. Keep on grappling. Oh, come on. There we are. Grab on. Oh, looks like Rift Islands. It's great news. Thank you. I do already, always. Just like you. How much damage? Ooh, not great damage. The Rift Downs? Oh, no, they're kind of cute. Blast, and that hit nobody? What? Oh, is that a lag issue? That was weird. Come on. Luckily, we can't get hit by our friendly fire. But... Mm -hmm. Oh, there are flim brats over there, too. It... You know, I'm pleasantly surprised that you admit that they're cute, honestly. They are cute. I will contend that. And, okay, that Yunkasur is not doing anything right now, but... It's gonna be fun once I actually have Keen H. We can just grab them whenever without having to interact with a Yunkasur. 
because they are slow. Well, it... I would say so, but they're very, very angular. You know, I... Honestly, in that case... Raises the question of what you define as ugly. Because I like them. I think they're cute. But it done Night Owl, this could have made us a killing. That... Hey, don't try pinning it all on me. If it's really beyond saving, at least we got plenty of substitutes. Oh, Kukasaurus wine. Oh, so our little buddy appeared around there, so presumably that's connected to his quest line. Well, let's come back later. It... I feel like this is one of those subjective situations. Jim Razor Karen Kindling, and he's over there. We haven't whittled them all yet. Trina died. Ready when you are. I'll keep the keep once again. Down the kindling. Cleanse the filth and waddle the brangers. Yada, yada, yada. There we go. Talk with Trinidad. Should be all of the brangers. Let's regroup with Trinidad. Or oh, that is all over there. Oh, presumably we have to grapple on there today. Move those pillar switches. Fair. Now, I think the rift hands are cute. But I think a lot of things are cute. Even, and especially things other people would not. You know, I was right about you. You've outperformed all of our previous candidates. There was an ancient name for outstanding flame bearers. I'm sure the one I would consider you for the honor. Palmon could probably get the job done too. If she just fly. Now, although I'd probably take Palmon quite a bit longer. Oh, all right, now there's still a few days left until the ceremony. I should probably get back so I can inform the chief and your elders that I've found the flame bearer we need. Yeah, exactly. I think that's why it's very, very dangerous. To make aesthetic preferences the basis of morality. And a lot of people fall into that trap very quickly. Oh, you mean they still got to sign off on it? Some of them are still hoping we can come to a real teenage. That's only because they haven't seen you in action. So I'm the one responsible for securing the flame bearer, and my recommendation is you. As for Palmon's own peace of mind, are you sure it's not going to be a problem having outlanders take on such an important role in your ceremony? See so that place over there? There was a town long over the edge of Birkin and the Mountain King. The signs of the camp called that our home. That's actually another world quest that activates automatically when you explore the area. After a period of upheaval, our ancestors were forced to move away. Now it has become a place where youths go to develop courage and kindle a spirit of adventure. We feel to keep the crap posed by the mountain at bay, it might not be long before we have to move again and find a new home. So to answer your question, I think everyone will agree that you are the right choice. There are enough desperate times called their desperate measures. I'll need you to drop my place at some point before the ceremony. That's alright, there's still a few final details that we need to discuss. Okay, see you later then. Uh, my gratitude. Is that the end of that quest, or...? We've helped out with a lot of other local festivals before, but this one feels a little difficult. You know, let's take a break before we're heading back to Trinidad's place. That... Oh, hello, Kinich. Gonna say something, or...? Hmm. It's watching us. The end of it. Fair. That's why it's important when things are baby girl, right? It's okay. You're you're Sicilian, not Italian. Sicilian. Oh, but yep, this is blunt. Okay. So yeah, this ancestral temple is a location where I can find some more stuff. But honestly, I should probably. Good son, and there we go. Reputation level increased. Reputation level up. We got contention. Okay. It. I kind of talk like my dad. Hmm, need a little bit more of that. It's interesting that Milani uses whale mats. Apparently, Shuinen uses. weirdly enough. Scar mats. Hmm. Well. So, should I go to the Ancestral Temple now? 
should I ink? Because that's the other world, big world quest for Signs of the Canopy. Or should I go do Abyss now? Because I did say I would do Abyss. Tribe Reputation. That's... What do we get from People of the Springs? It's new there. Or... Oh, we got a bit more world exploration from something. Okay. I'll take your word for it. Big thing is, is that next week I'll be able to get them straight to max for Mesli. Or, I won't be able to get them to max maybe, depending on how much of Toyok I explore, but... I can get them to the point where, if I do two bounties, two supply requests, and do one from some other tribe, I can make it so that when I get max exploration progress, that will give me max rep level without anything being wasted. And that's something I like. It's not wasting any points. Let's go back to Abyss. Okay. But... Well, it's more about getting things done when they come out. That's what I'd say. We have advanced very quickly through the battle pass here. They have a lot of these artifact enhancement quests help. I'll see the event being pretty quick. Pretty soon, that is. Okay. So. They want burning. Question is who I'm going to run for that then. Emily's gotta be in here. There's no way that doesn't happen. The question is what I can maybe run on 412. I... Who would break the golem shield, though? Hmm. Maybe I could try Milani there, but... Actually, yeah, Dia... I run Dia on that Milani team. And I think that means we use Dia to break things. Well, oh, but I can't because... Wouldn't be able to do anything against Hydrotopa. Maybe I use Milani first half then. That's tough. Hmm. I mean, it could work. But. She's okay in multi target. Okay in multi target. But it. I'm gonna try to figure out. I can use the same team throughout and then. They really, really like Geo Shields here. Is that quartz, bronze, or is that the one that lets you play as Pokemon? Because I might have discussed that one before. If so, hmm. Would fit on a team that takes this thing down. Oh, that's funny. Issue with using. Oh, so that's not the one. There was one that was also a gold and silver ROM hack that I might have. I probably mentioned this maybe to you, maybe not. But they made it so that they replaced the Elite Four with the devs and their friends. And people did not like that, understandably. Scorching silver? Why scorching? Hmm. Okay, that's funny. Huh. Huh. Weird. Nitro damage. I feel like Emily Milani has to be in one part. Question is what I'll do with burning on the other. Maybe if I really wanted to, I could try some kind of funny quick burn team, maybe? I don't know. Burning Nihita. Let's use burning as a crit buff. I could see it being okay on Nihita or Lakino team or something. You got the most scuffed build ever. Then it... But, to break the shield, 
Maybe they're just not gonna get to use burning here. Oh, that's in that game. But what can I use against Tulpa that? Honestly, it's just Navia. I think we just got to use Navia here. That's fine. I'm okay with that. Bring her back. Okay. Serpent Zbine. Her crit rate is a bit swingy. That's fine. So I just saw the DM. What were you asking? Nonsense. Oh, that's funny. Mm -hmm. So I guess it's a Navi. Uh, that's all I can really think of doing. Yeah, at this point, I'd like to try to use the disorders, but there are limits to what I can actually manage. Opponent's details. This has not changed yet. The safari? What do you mean by that? So Navia first half, Moani second half then. That team's gotta be... The big thing is that Sucrose actually doesn't do all that much. And I think double Dendro actually might work better. Double Dendro and Dia. Yeah, that kind of rhymes. Okay. Mark. Dia. Oh, oh, okay, you mean the Safari Zone. Okay, I was confused for a second. That's a decent enough team, and then... Navia team remains basically unchanged. All right. And lightning. Cool. Got me happy. Skill damage, sure. Because that'll help Milani too. That said, Milani Dia team has no hard sustain, and that might become a problem. Let's see what happens. Okay. But, you do have to wait for Serpent Spine Stacks. That is the weakness of this team. Okay, boom. Boom. Hit and one, two. Oh my goodness. Blast. One, two. Okay. It sounds like a problem with a relatively simple solution. I'm sure you know what that is already. Thanks, and there we go. Yeah. Well, either way, I wish you luck. Okay, that one there. Yum boost. And that helps everyone. Okay, and oh my, okay. Cool, I guess. And oh, uh, we didn't have enough, so. Oh, please. Glass. No harm. And that. Pretty darn good. Okay. I, especially since Nahida and Emily together can sustain the burning pretty easily. That's a fun team. Why not take max attack? It's just like this, we'll use this to get a little more energy back. Thank you, and oh my goodness. Come on, I, oh well. Put that down. And that down. Yeah, down. Plus, break some of those shields. One, plus, up. Mm, never mind it. Oh, well, I connection is being weird again for some reason. Whatever. Hello, hello. One, two, three. And thank you, Albedo. Cool. Oh, oh, nice. Got that going. And how much did we? I should put down. I did not quite see well, whatever. 
Crawl in. One, two. Bite. And uh, one, two, three. Bite or miss entirely. Okay. Well, that kind of worked. Okay, we got lots of energy from all this. Thank you, thank you. And rotation's long enough that Dia gets her stuff back, which is real nice. Okay. And we'll just put that down. And one, two, three. And, well, or not. Three and bite and miss. Miss. Yeah, I think we just missed. Whatever. Hmm. That is Moni's weakness. You really need to hit. That will not work. It's funny how the Numa node's still here. I mean, the Usia node's still here. Do not need that. Whatever. One. Maybe the application might have counted out. Maybe. And. Did that hit? I hope that hit. Two. Three. And. Blast. One. Oh my goodness. Uh, who is here? Yeah. It's tough sometimes. Thank you. Um, plus, and that got rid of that. And plus, thank you, Nadia. Okay. Let us continue on our merry way. So the challenge, no Usi on the team. How sad. I'm gonna cry. Thank you, and Emily will keep that burning up. One, and, well, or not. One, two, three. Oh, well, I, ah, stupid, and now I'm gonna miss. Now that's all over. Come on. And they all got gone. That burst is actually a real nice chunk of damage. Okay. Think Milani here, Navi here. Well, actually. Yeah. I'd say. May, may. I, I don't know. Well, you know, it probably doesn't make all this difference. This is literally very early. Yeah. I have. I also cried a lot today. Mostly because of Record of Ragnarok. But the only reason I forced myself to actually read Record of Ragnarok to make myself cry was for other reasons. Yeah, it, it wasn't today, but I, I've also done some screaming somewhat recently. It's live. Okay. 360 no scope on the E at all. And come on. One, two, first, and we need to make sure that... Wait, they're all dead already? Okay. Thank you, Emily. It... it Life is life. Yeah, more or less. Better than a Mahoyo Honkai third bunny girl situation, I guess. Okay, and one, two, three, four, one, two, three, one, two. We're shit interruption rats, but that's life. One, two, three. There we go. Cool. Nice. And keep on going. Okay, crit rate and... Oh, there we go. We got our... Battle Pass period stuff. Fun. That said... Depending on the length of... How long is theater going to last... We got two Abyss lineups to this patch, but the second one is going to be on Monday, a week and a half from now, which is basically the final day of the stream event right before the Kinich banner. Okay. But I think I'll do that that day too, and wrap up some other loosens maybe. It's interesting enough that, appar is that apparently there are going to be some pretty big changes to the overworld map uh -huh. next patch, not to say too much. Which is interesting and exciting. And I... Oh, come on. I, one, two, three. Fight. One, two. Fight. And let's get that in. 
fight. Uh, how did that not work? Whatever. Okay, we got you here, and... It... Connection is real weird. I... I feel like it might be... Just a bandwidth thing, maybe a... That did it already. It... You know... Emily is good. She actually is good. It... I'm just glad I was able to fit new characters in here. Means that presumably next patch will try to use Keenage and Shuna. Well, it's interesting. Because... They did it in... A way that ar arguably actually makes characters with show the specialties passive more useful, which I really like. And they also added it as a bonus effect to pretty much every not one's character's existing stuff, which is also pretty cool. But the thing for me is that one, two, three, one, two, and blast, and wow. I know this is just 410, but I feel real strong. That would be fair. I haven't used Navi a month since, much since I actually gave her an artifact set and really leveled her skills. But as I was saying... They show an area. Basically a circle. But the specialties themselves are not individually marked on the map. So you can still use... If you have that specialty sewing passive, you just can go straight to a place and have them marked. And I think it does make it a little less useful, but it not completely, and it synergizes well. They put thought into making sure it would totally negate what already existed, and I like that. Thanks, and okay, well, okay. Bye, and there we go. Thank you, Miss Els. Okay. I wish the missiles looked like the puffers she throws and collects. Because in the one cutscene where she fights with Kachina, she fights on the surfboard not by just biting, but by strafing around people and throwing balloons at them from the surfboard. I think that would help sort of show. Thank you. Put that down. Cool. And get your behind over here. Thank you, and ooh, nice. Can I, cool, dodge, shoot, and, well, we missed the crit. So good damage. Okay. So I'm going. Tantra damage bonus, that's good for one person precisely. I would, s <sighs> Stone Hide Law, which was interesting, but even if Navi could break it, it still resists Geo in a way that, don't have a great way to shred. Huh. Well, I... Pure Maiden also resists... Hy Hydro, does she? I don't know. I... would think, honestly, that... Navia's team would still be better for this half. Maybe. Again, this is early on enough that it doesn't really matter. Next patch, maybe, I think... There have been some suggestions, I think from the devs themselves actually, so Mahoyo Ninja is no kill, that you'll be able to start skipping 4s, 9, and 10 if you beat 11 and 12. The, well, if you beat 12, so you've got to beat 11 and beat 12. If you've beaten 12, you can skip 9 and 10 in the next Abyss lineup, which I'm not sure I'd even do. Because I like how this showcases abilities. Also, it stalls for time. Okay. They put out an animated short. I bet you saw it. Showing Milani rescuing people. And at one point, they actually show the Fontaine Sailor, who we can actually meet, that lecturer guy who talks about his girlfriend and not one. You actually see him with another not one NPC who is presumably his girlfriend. But a lot of people, for the sake of trolling, were joking that his girlfriend is Milani. Which is amusing. It's an okay-ish bit, I guess. And one, two, 
three, one, zero. All right, we can let Albedo finish this. This is decent enough defense. Bombs. Oh, I did not mean to do that. That messed me up. Really awful. And where are they going? Come on. One, two, three, one, two. Which is, well, it's not legitimate. They're joking to try to make other people mad. Okay, okay. It... It's always just a troll. Without exception. Okay, let's put this down. Probably actually mark more in the meantime before we switch to Monty, but oh. Mm, we don't have range for deer yet, though, is the thing. Okay, well. Maybe if I was really fast, I could have gotten another, but that's tough. Come on. Put that down, and mm, we're missing a couple. Yeah, but a, a different kind of troll. You're more good-natured than that. You don't have the kind of unreserved malice that people who basically try to imply that various... And did we... That was incredibly close. You can see it tick down to 60 right before that burst landed. Insane. Oh, I bet the bloom course would probably hurt me a little. Just damage, okay. We'll go with HP. But as I was... It... You'll have to take these as they come. Mm -hmm. To be fair, maybe I could try using the characters with bonuses from theater. I don't know. Come on. This time... That's what Honkai means. Not Honkai. Honkai. One, two, three, and one, two. Oh, hello. Shoot. One, two. Three, one, two, and luckily the blunt damage is stopping them quite well, actually. Uh, okay, come on. One, two, and oh goodness, last and not so get over here. I right. shoot and we got both of them. We actually got both of them. That is incredible. We're winning. We're winning so hard. Okay, and I thought I had to do one more shot. I did not end up having to do one more shot. Keep on going. And... How many did I just mark? I can't even tell. One, two... Ooh, nice shield. And... Let's burst down here and... Flash itself a turbine it will work. And... Bite! And... A few more. Two... Three... Bite! And, mm, well, I... Ah, never mind. Over one more and... Let's go and... That was decent enough. Mm. Come on. And I... We need to mark you then. Thank you, and... I'm only... Thank you. Nice, and Milani. And... Fight! Oh, big damage. It is honestly kind of funny how low... My natural health is... I mean, Lava Troll health. You know, in all my many years of playing this game, I still mix up Lava Trolls and Mighty Trolls. Whatever. Gotta wait for this to come back. She should have her burst up right now. I hope. I do like this team. It. Shiori does not technically fully power creep Albedo. She's worse without a geo construct unless you have C1. Okay. Thanks, Ames. You don't need all of that. Just need. Okay, come on. Two, three, one, two, and shoot. And one, two. Oh, multiple? That's vile. Come on. And we can. Did we dodge that or not? I can't tell. I. We need to center this a bit more, I think. Thank you, and. Dodge. Shoot. One, two. Who got hit and who didn't? It! When he's good, he's good. He has his niche, though. 
I hope. I think. I would say. Okay. So the challenge is... 360 no scope. It's... I like that they just spawn them immediately around us. It's fun. Okay, and two, three, five, and oh, this is chaotic. Come on, I three, and we can get these really, really fast. We can actually get another one off, kind of. And let's just use them the blast. And cool enough. Thank you. And oh, luckily that didn't kill one, two, and go like this. Thank you, and Milani, two, three, right, one, two, three, right, one, two, three, well, I'm uh, two, three, right, and can I use in domains? What does that mean? Well, we're close. That did it. Okay. Lovely. So, now I'll be a second half, especially since... The permanent Hydro Aura works really, really well with her. It helps that if it were Permacron or Permo Pyro, then you want pure Vaporize or pure Melt, maybe, but Vaporize is only 50% on Perma Hydro, which is good, but not crazy crazy. This is good for Navia. Real good for Navia. One thing is she cannot, there's no Numa on the team. To stun this thing. That's fine. Hmm. Perpetual mechanical array. That'll be Milani time. Milani. A lot of people say she's clunky. And she's definitely weird. And if you miss your sharks, you're going to lose your shark. It's kind of the point, though. It's supposed to be real tough. So we'll help both of them. Cool. And one, two, and thanks. Oh, I missed that. Had to miss that. That was annoying. Three, and can I... Okay. Oh, never mind. You... Okay. Right. Well, whatever. I... Damage was good, but... We should try that again. A little clunky. The way her wave momentum stacks work is... Kinda weird and silly, honestly. She has her limitations, which are deliberate, but still. And that actually... That is a perfect time for it to do that attack. Thank you, and one, two, three. We can get out of the way. One, two, three, and... I can't use more of that, but I... Mm. That! Good damage. I think... Keep that going until... It goes silly mode, and... Yep, there we are. Gotta make sure Nikita gets to mark everybody. Mm. And... Just like that. And, well... Uh, that did not work perfectly, and... Emily, Emily, thank you, and can I, one, two, three, bite, one, two, three, bite, and one more, one, two, well, ah, good lord, that was unpleasant, can I, ah, please, one, two, this down, Milani, one, two, three, bite, one, two, three, and before you, okay, that took longer than I would have liked, See how Tolba does it. Huh. This may suck. No, we that was a little only a little over a minute. That's fine. But time we gotta wait here. Before Tolba comes out is one, two, three, uh, well, not all that bad, but did have a bit of stun for time, which I don't like. Okay. Let's iframe that, and can we first up? Okay, come on. Come on. Right, there we go. One, two, and it's like this. Blast, one, dodge. One, two, three, and one, hit. This is imperfect, but we're doing well for ourselves. And blast, you down there, and dodge. 
And, okay. You know what? Sure, get a slightly better shield than that. And thank you, and... Okay, come on. And now we can put you down there. And, okay. Dodge. Oh. Do not kill me. I beg of you. And dodge. Okay. This is actually a fight where dodging is legitimately crucial. I like that. And can I shoot? And, uh, that... I'm not sure if the particles just didn't pop in or what was going on there, but it was weird. I... Sometimes you got a bag. You know how it is. And... If it works, it works. There we go. Thank you, Navia. Gunbrel is so peak. There are few things more satisfying than in a game than finding... You have some research to charge up to deal just one big number hit. Yula did that, but Yula sucks. Sorry, physical's never gonna be good. But Navi is like that, Hazo is like that, Keenich is gonna be like that too. Also, three out of four of them are claymores. So, you know, which makes sense for some that's meant to be sort of a big hit kind of thing. Hmm. Yeah, that might help with durability, honestly. I don't know, I don't know. Thanks. Um, did that hit them? That did hit them, good. And... Thank you. Oh, one, two. Fight. One, two, three. Fight. One, two, three. Fight. One, two, two. And, well, okay. You know what? Oh, it's not gonna burst, but whatever. Okay. You're not gonna vape in the burst. And, oh, this is... Maybe troublesome. I, okay. One, two, three. And, oh, my goodness. Fight! One, two, three. Fight! One, two, three. Oh, well, we. Ah, oh, come on, you got me kidding. It's really annoying. Come on. Come on. Your towns are vile for this team. Well, every other, too. Luckily, Emily is keeping the dream alive. Come on. What? Mm. There are limits to the strength of this here. Who, who, and. Uh. Come on, come on. Uh. Got timing issues, a lot of issues here. There we are, we got this going. Legit, but I am probably gonna need some kind of healing. Blessing at the end of this garbage. Well, it. Cool, and one more hit. Hopefully, and, well, kinda, kinda, come on, one, two, and, take that down, come on, come on, one, two, three, fight, and, we don't have a huge amount of time here, this one had better be good, or I might need to reach one of the chamber and hope that the rift downs are less stupid, is that teleporting, Maldi's damage is good, it's more single target focus than Nuvia, and the big thing is just keeping her bites up. She can usually get three if you're really lucky for those maximal bites rotation, and you need them at three. You need them at three stacks, otherwise they're weak as all get out. But, as I was saying, and come on, come on, come on. Okay, here we are. And break that and dodge. Oh, come on. Come on. And we can do it like this. And, that down. and now we can get Navia going. One, two, three. This should be pretty good. Given how well. Okay, and come up. Okay, and. Oh, well, never mind, maybe. Take that down. Blast. Oh. Metric or Imperial? Either way, sorry to hear it. And... Blast. All about that position. This is a fun one for sure. And... Blast. It's all about that speed and power. We can do this if we're smart and brave and wise. And, okay. Plunge Navia. And, ooh, yep. Plunge Navia, baby. We're doing it. So we got this. Energy might be a problem, but it's a problem for this one too. It, we gotta get that HP restoration. 
Risk and reward. Risk and reward. And, oh. All right. Okay, for a second I thought she died. That was scary. And one, two, three. Bye. And two, three. Bye. One, two, three. Bye. And let's go for the burst since we have it. And, well, whatever. Thanks. And put that down. Thank you, Emily. Put this back down on all of you and go for a Mulani and oh my why are you so far away you clowns I hate you so much well that uh, never mind come on dear dear well uh, Fablance is real good on this team honestly come on come on thanks you need well uh, now she gets her burst back being able to sustainably maintain the burst this way is actually an absolute godsend okay not a lot of hard sustain, but at least burning is not all that much trouble here. And boom. Let's go for this, and now we got you two and nobody else. Let's make this freaking happen. And thank you. What we really need to do is make sure that this gets on everyone. Fight! To stop her in her tracks. Fight! And I need to make sure. Well, hit, hit, and. Mm. Thank you. That croc being out of the way was actually vile. First, time is never time at all. Get a little under a minute and a half. See how well we can make this work. Godspeed. Well, it. This one is. Look at this goal. Look at this goal. It's a gimmick fight. This is a gimmick fight. I think we can manage. Well, actually, the best way would be to just shoot twice at- Wait, what? Oh, no, because of the cooldown, right. Hate my stupid Chungus life. Come on, the dodge and the blast. Yep, there it is. Cooldown on that, cooldown on that. Let's make this happen. Make it happen, make it happen. Oh, please, please. And burst it. Nice, nice. Take this down and thank you. Blast. One, two, three. Yep, you are weak. You are weak without your shield. One, two, three. Got you halfway down with the time we had, which... And now we got you. Thanks. And blast like that. And we even got that back too. Let's end. Fischl and shoot. One, two. Good. We're whipping it up, absolutely whipping it up, and I probably be best off just going for one final shot. God damn, god damn, that felt good. Whew. I'm a gambler. That was a toe curler of an abyss run. That was fun. Okay, well, gotta clear out some trash. Do that real quick. Uh, well, it also helps that <laughs> all these characters had boosts. Not crazy, especially since it's only 20% boost. Which is a lot more impactful when you have low stats. When you don't have level artifacts and they're all level. Actually, it's good for levels. But weapons and artifacts will largely negate a lot of the help of that. But it still helped a little. I don't need to downplay my skill. Team building skill. Well, to be fair, team building skill is just watching the fan community. Okay. But Candace needs stuff eventually. We'll get her stuff now. <sighs> but that was an absolute adrenaline rush. You know, it'd be a good. Thank you. I'm glad. I'm glad you liked it. That actually means a lot to me. Be a good way to cool off would be going into. That temple and exploring it.
Let's all do that. But I guess, not to say too much about what I've seen. Like I said, the world will change significantly next patch due to story events. But what I wonder is basically, do I go and explore now? Well, probably not this patch, because I want to save stuff for next stream event. So I have stuff to actually do that's remotely interesting. And so you know I can play other games like New Zelda. But... And that was quick to new for a second. It was not new. But as I was saying, that new. I'm wondering whether I want to explore the world entirely before I do the Orcon Quest next patch, or if I want to just do the Orcon Quest and then explore the world so that any changes that get meaningfully made, I can just. I don't. So I won't have to go over it a second time. That's my question. But. We got some nice stuff. Right now, with that, we have 22540. About 165 rolls on here. This, that's 172. So, in theory, I could go in deep for Keen Age, but the question is just. Juanen. Honest to God, I hate to say it. <laughs> I have a job now. I could actually open my wallet if I wanted to. <laughs> I mean, nothing unreasonable, but... You know, no weapons, no cons, but just... If I want to make sure I get everyone... I didn't say that. I didn't say that. Okay, but... We're going back to the dimple. The ancestral dimple. It's not... It's not a flex, it's just... The way that the game's gameplay is made more interesting is by just getting new characters, so... If I have a choice between getting new characters and not doing that, you know, I'm gonna go for the new characters. Especially since, you know, the new gameplay is... I think saying locked might be a bit strong, but... You can engage with the new gameplay aspects in a... much more thorough way if you have... new characters. There are far fewer limitations if you do that. There's a monitor here and it's something breakable. Oh, the graffiti's there. It... Well, part of it is also just... The graffiti's gone, gone. Part of the game's most interesting things are also summed up in... Doing quests. I mean, using new characters. So it's also just about the fact that I'm also trying to entertain other people. It's not all about me. It's just mostly about me. Okay. I don't think that's humility, but it's got to count for something, right? So I think we'll just blow up all these guys with funny flame granites. That's funny. Flame granite. And... Yeah, yeah. Thanks. And it... I think the big thing is that... The fact that I've gotten... Since Fontaine... And to be fair, the couple of extra Prima Gems they... Throw at streamers also helps as a small mercy. But it's mostly just... I've gotten weirdly lucky. Honestly. In order to be able to get... This rock definitely breaks and leads to something underneath. There's no way it doesn't. I've gotten lucky in terms of being able to get new characters as they come out. And I cannot responsibly expect to be lucky forever. And my enjoyment and your enjoyment is, I would say, at least partially predicated on the fact that even if you don't have new characters and you, well, don't play the game anymore, you can see what's going on by watching me. It's not even an attempt at bragging, it's just the unabashed truth, for better or worse. There we go, and big damage. Is there a flame brand in there? I couldn't tell. Oh, Avatar of Lava! Okay. Oh, there and You've got permanent, yep, permanent pyro aura on you. It's the difference between the ones who want to apply more power to and the ones that just use pyro on and 
Come on. I probably should have put Dia down here, whatever. I did not mean to do that. Is it too many times? It's big fat damage is what it is. It's a sequence which will probably lead to a treasure chest. And yep, right over there. Oh, it... Oh, I didn't even notice. I think when it showed up, it blew up the rock. Well, that's fun. I was too focused on killing things. Knew that would do something, but I thought it'd be a bit more... Whatever. So... I want to do a little bit more mining here. There are crystals in the air. Let's get the crystals. Okay. That's down here. Bottom area of the temple. And that's a lot of crystals, too. As I did a quest wherein... Did a quest down in here. And that lava down there used to be a lot lower. This used to be an area you could kind of walk around with a lava pool in the middle. There was a chest here that you only could get if you basically waited for the lava to ebb and and went down into sort of the shore area. I just want to make sure nothing like that happens here. Capiche. Okay, so this actually, some of them move. I did not know that. That's cool. Mm -hmm. The big thing is there are three little objectives in this temple area that once you beat them, it automatically starts a world quest without a normal marker on the map. That's what I'm aiming to do right now. Yeah, Wakata. Thank you, and... Are there... There are flame granites nearby. Thank you. So we will take these guys down the only way I know how. Nice the thing is, we can vaporize that, which means... Dealing about half their HP and damage instead of a third. And no damage to me, even. Fine. Oh, lag. Hate that. So let's... Shoot the dinos like this, too. But you can use that to jump up, because this is by Toyok. How did that not... Huh? Okay, well. So I guess it's balanced around. If you proc a vape dealing... Basically half HP and damage. If you don't, dealing about a third. That makes sense. There we go. Cool. So, we'll ignore those. We got Milani anyway. She is a substitute. So what is in there? This is... One of the greatest tragedies over time. Honest to goodness, I don't know if you can get it in Europe. But we're getting graffiti marks. Oh, that's cool. Part of graffiti art that was once painted onto a wall. Perhaps if you can put it back in place, you can see what the art was about. I wonder where we'll see broken graffiti then. I have started eating these mule shakes. Well, I wouldn't call them... Well, the big difference is that they're not meant to be diet shakes. They're high enough calorie that you can and you're supposed to basically eat them as your food. It's called Huel. Yo, I could even give you my sign-up code. But it's very easy and quick to make them. They're very healthy, very easily digestible, and it, to me it actually tastes good. It's sweet and savory. But I don't know if and how you'd be able to get near up. It's also, at least in comparison to American food, very, very inexpensive. And if you compare it to the time you would other spot would spend cooking, the deal is and looks even better. And it's really, really healthy for you too. There are a bunch of probiotics and the like in it. You know, it's... You know, I don't want to sound too much like a show, but I'm going to show it. I like it. But like I said, I'm not sure whether you'd be able to really get it all that well in Europe. Well, it's not liquid, it's... This is going to sound... Maybe a little unappetizing, but it's the only way to describe it, it's... For lack of a better term, it's basically just nutrient sludge. And I enjoy it because I'm weird and screwed up in the head. But it... I mean, in the end, I don't think there's anything wrong with it. <laughs> I don't think there's anything wrong with it. But again, I'm weird. Okay, ball path converters. What is this, Undertale ball game? Okay. 
Once a relay ball has been thrown at the fixer, if a ball path converter will fire the ball in the direction the converter is facing after charging for a short time, it's process the ball's color will change to that of the converter. Interesting. Can we change this direction? We can hit it to change the direction. Presumably it's gotta go in there, I would expect. Let's see how well we can grapple up there, and the answer is not okay-ish. And, oh come on. So is there going to be anything in here other than this ball catcher? What I do like is that this is very, very Aztec. That the Aztec ball game was very famous, maybe infamous, because it had, well, you know, human sacrifice elements. Not to be too silly about that. Hit it. Oh, and, oh, we got a camera angle. Oh, but... Oh, now, presumably it'll travel slowly enough that we can... Hit it and then switch its direction to bring the gate back down. Yep, that is no way that's not what I'm supposed to do here. Second. Hmm. This may hurt you a little. I need to do a tiny bit, one, one single or Duolingo lesson so I don't lose my streak. I'm almost done. Okay, it's done. Oh, oh. Huh. Well, it, I would say it's probably solid enough. Maybe. I would hope. Get that. It's consuming full distance because it's basically a fruit. Oh, so now that's shown that, or, wait, what? It's not... Huh? Oh, oh, right, because... I was just getting confused like an idiot. Okay. Shoot that in there, and nice and slow. Oh, if you shoot it out while it's... moving... at all. Set out an angle, and there we are! That required a bit of speed. Ball path converter, just aiming direction. So now, there's a chest up there, okay. And that long grapple, I like that. Hmm, tiny statue, but it also seems like a key. Yep, we need those for that quest, Courier's Trail Keystone. A stone mechanism used to unlock. The gates of ancient altars among the signs of the canopy. This mechanism serves as a trial machine, where only the most experienced couriers are said to be able to acquire all three keystones in a short span of time. What do they mean by short? <laughs> It can mean a lot of things. Maybe by short they mean me. Oh, okay, well. Hmm. Much to think about then. And, well, you know, that opened it. Fair enough. And, hmm. That there. It's a shame that swords don't seem to have any innate healing. Oh, well. So... Let's their mats. Wonder, I saw a monitor around here. I bet. It's in here, maybe? No, they just didn't seem to drop anything. Mm -mm. Huh, but it does not appear like anything is over in that ball catcher area now. I think that's done, but what is interesting is there is an obsidian monument. Which is going to lead to some boss fight. Okay, well. My fear is, and I'm sure people have said similar things, that it could be Silkical. And that... You know, the consequences of stress need to more stress. Okay, so there's cooldown. Not fun. Mm -mm. Now what is this going to lead up to? Is there something on this little area? I think I'll... I don't know, because... Not sure how long I want to go for, but... Finishing the boss fight versus... Finishing the rest. Mm -mm. That's... 
Oh, we're digging up embers. Okay. Oh, well. Okay. Come on. What if I try to tongue that up? Hmm. I think we just stepped up. Never mind. So this then goes up. Hi, oh, Milani. Is up to. Ah, a chest up here. Okay. Thank you. Okay, well. Don't accept defeat. I forbid it. You're not allowed to do that. Oh, over there. Okay. Obtain spores of repose. But I wonder if and how Keenich could use that too. Oh, I think this is their special location. Yep, their special hidden space. And now that's run. Okay. And it. Finding Yumkasaurs like this is fun. Yeah, this. Some of those artifact juices are going to be in here. Yeah. Mark that there. Okay. Don't get lost. Don't die. Ancestral Temple, and that leads to. Oh, probably under. Or. Huh? What does this lead to? We're going down, down. Huh. I. Now, what is this? There's a wild manifestation here. Now, that's crazy, crazy. It's one of the jades, then. Well, it does not appear as if there are fruits here, so we're going to have to just free ball it, basically. Okay. Cool. And put that there. And one, two, three, right. One, two, three, right. One, two, three. Mm. Okay, well, damage out means this is a burning shield now. Luckily, that will keep going, but still. Come on. What is that seed? And beam is easy enough to manage, which is good. I Come on. Burning. And Milani on fuel. And get stunned, get stunned. Thank you! One, two, three. Right. One, two, three. And. Right. Well, okay. Never mind. Maybe. And another. Bye. And there we are. Okay, I'll have to forget him, but it's life. That ends. What is inside here then? Says some sort of little sprite on there, but no special statue from that. Okay, fair enough. Okay, candle cap, and let's get a. Top. Go inside, but any grapple points around here? Well, I presume we just gotta do this grapple platform in ourselves. Here is ball game. Hmm. Oh, it wasn't there. Okay, I think that might have activated it. But <sighs> see everything. I'm just happy that didn't fall damage me. Wondered how strict they were going to be with that. Hmm. Ball game, ball game. Right there, and we got a platform, good. Hmm. That then, we need to position a lot of things. Candle cap, candle cap, and. Wall path converter, just aiming direction. Hmm. Blue goes. <sighs> yeah, we gotta make it face here. How many directions can it face? Okay. Each one only seems up to it then. That's keeps things simple, I guess. Okay. Oh, there's a gate here. Okay. Path converter. Yeah, that's fine enough. Okay. Question is what's on top on top. Oh, well, there's a cooldown there. Interesting enough, and so we got up top here. Now, the door, we can open that now at least. 
Investigate. Okay. Yeah, what is all this? Mm -hmm. It's a chest there. Break that without breaking other things. Mm -hmm. Check for signs. Yeah, we're good. Got a chest. So that's a decent enough time to condense. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay thank you. Do that into the stupid feather. Epic Candace moment. So I guess I'll level her. On Sunday? Sure. Mm -hmm. HP goblet. Better than an H poop goblet. Don't. Please kill me. Sell so circle it. And oh, read. Damage stone tablet. The inscription on it has been eroded by the relentless passage of time. You can still manage to vaguely make out some of what the remaining text says. Offer to the Lord of the Crossroads, offer to the Father in Black. The ears of grain wave like a sea when the flowers are in bloom and the canals are in full flow. Crossroads, the devil? Blood of heroes. The heads of nobles, the first cry of the newborn. You offer them to you, the key keeper of countless secrets of the great spirit that was weep deep within the dreamscape. Will the secret be the answer to our questions? The seek from you guidance on the path forward. Hmm. Okay. And that it's not something we can or have to break. Crystal fly, hello. Break that, I suppose, for foul? I gotta see what's down here then. We got Ball game doing what ball game has to do. Come on. Then grapple. And how can we? Oh, okay. So there's a limit to the range we can shoot, and we have it. And these pyro constructs, I suppose, allowing us to shoot ball out in the right direction. Well, and then what's next? Ah, oh, so that opens that door. Yep. And, ah, uh, more sigils to get up to the top more easily. Okay. That door is also open, and there's also just a chest shown there, and that ball is not coming back. Come on. You and Entity times out and disappears. Okay. So then, let's just see what's inside of that door. Hmm. Answer is nothing. Okay, cool. So then we got these over there to make that a little easier, but it's not as if that's really needed. Needed. Could already open that door. I guess it's just for guesting and nothing to break. It's weird. How did I see? Maybe here. Let's see another barrel. Or maybe we could use that on the lineup. I guess. I suppose. Maybe. Oh, are we just going on the other side of that temple, or...? Space seems a bit... interesting. Oh, nothing. Is this...? Oh, I think this is where I was before, so I think I came around the other way. Yeah, this is where I came before, in that... What's in there? Hello. Let's go out of that little cavern area. What happens if I break that brazier? Markable chest. Stone head of Echoes standard workshop. Echoes. This is canopy. Where is that randomized? Damage stone tablet 2. A damage stone tablet. The inscription on it has been eroded by the relentless passage of time. Still manage to vaguely make out some of the remaining text says. 30 sacks of grain, 30 sacks of fruit. Exchange for copper and gets obsidian at the same value. A and a serial low quality copper. Quality returned by the priest over C. The day of the third lunar eclipse, the chief priest of the palace is about shame and siege to the tribes. Locked funds for the poor as follows. He meant as follows, the duty scribe must make a record of. On the day of the third lunar eclipse, the chief priest and the priest still leaders all the tribes of a region to quell conflict and ceremonial war, to which the sacrifice of prisoners of war shall be illegal without exception. I... Okay, let's get another fruit. I want to see what happens if I light that brazier, actually. If anything. Oh, but of course I could just use Dia. <laughs> I forgot I had power on the party. Okay. 
Take Dia out and oops, thank you. Answer is nothing. Okay. It's gotta be one more tablet. I just didn't see somewhere. Presume it maybe be on the ground floor? This two is on. I don't know. I don't see any tablets here. Stone tablet one. Yeah, exactly. Sometimes you get treasure. The worst thing that happens is you don't get treasure. It's all good. Hmm. Still kind of a strange place. Hmm. And up there? Sure. You keep going here, please. Come on. How many times can we manage this? I Mm. There we go. We can use our jump. That was good. Mm -hmm. The Monitu is around there. This is just up top. Went down, we came back out up top. It might have been that, maybe. There were breakable rocks earlier. It was that spot I got into a dia. I had to break that with an explosion. We can break it a lot of ways, but explosion's easiest. So where is that monitor? That's my question. So that... Mm, ends. Hello? Hello. Maybe that's... For later. Maybe. But I... Feel an immense amount of pressure to go down and try that fight. At least once. Maybe. At least mark it so I know of it. We need to feed Milani. Take your coffee cake. Bavarian coffee. Okay. Thank you. One, two. I'm only down there. And Milani. One, two. Don't fall, off, please. Fight. And, well, that floater kind of went nowhere. Tyrant's Fang. Okay. Cool, cool, cool. Then, down there, or I wonder where that final stone tablet is going to be. Uh, copy barrows. I'm going to be nice to you and not kill them. But we can poke inside the Night Kingdom real quick. Touch gameplay tutorial. Oh, Night Salt, inscribe your shadow in this place. Special obsidian totem bowls and not alone. Say that special gift will be sent to the Night Kingdom when you touch these ancient totems, allowing them to witness the battle. Ancient Night Soul Warriors. The Call of War. Oh. That's Trial Trial of Sealing. This trial is Cryotex and the Hydrophobe Constructs them by the flow inverted wire manifestation to freeze them. Use this or perfect sound to wet it. Use your opponent's moves to deal damage to the Constructs. Or use them to block those attacks. Copy para. But what is interesting is that apparently somewhere in here that we can't see, we might need to actually fight all the bosses maybe, which we'll probably take more patches too. Apparently the nails in the middle there. I permanent hydra a cryo. I I'm wondering. What kind of team should I put together for this? It's all about freezing. Uh, but I wonder how much damage it'll actually take and deal. Chi Chi's healing isn't good enough for this. She doesn't work. I don't have her built. Oh, meh, mm, sure, it doesn't have artifacts, but. She'll work in a pinch, and then... You. Here's our cryo team. Let's see how this works. You are... Shimali's Shade, Will of Shields own. Shields Horns. That... Oh, okay. Can I... Ah, oh, right, you just have to break the... This is like the cryo hypostasis. Now I like this. This is fun. We're gone, your usage. Can I... And, oh, nice. And, mmm, can we block that or? Shoot, shoot, shoot. There we are. 
Is that a block? Or... Do a lot of things, frankly. Mm -hmm. Ooh, oh, oh no! Now I see what's going on here. Okay. Well, that was vile. Thank you. And... Oh, that dealt some damage, but... This needs to actually be a competent team. First and foremost. Hmm. Teleport disabled. Okay. Huh. Well. Call of War touched the tomb, the chamber in Etzra for the first time. This is a bit spicy for me. I think. I think. I will. Come back in a bit with an actual better team. Oh, but... Wait. I'm gonna retry the challenge or leave. This? How far can we go over this way anyway? But... So we're in Toyok Springs somewhere. The fact that Night Soul seems to be under Toyok is interesting. Not up this. But... Apparently that's a nail in the middle there. If you get rid of some map layers, it'll show you what's a nail there. These are all Wyub. Obelisks, like, from the main quest. I gotta head out. I'm gonna do that little temple run, basically, real quick, and then that'll be... It is real pretty. That... It's not an into that, though. Hmm. Yeah, that... Ganyu got kind of clowned on. That's certainly something. Okay. Well, we can do the funny ball game challenges. And that'll be good. Okay. Yep. I won't take too long. It's in Jvelvis. Kinich, I await you. On bated breath. So how far up there, then? Hmm. That's my real question. Just... Kinich is... Can we get up... Can we can get up here? Anything up here? Well... There's a monitor here. Okay. Hello. Hello. You know what? Get kicked. Get kicked. Everyone's boyfriend. Platonic boyfriend. What did that activate? Blocked by some cannot be open. Oh, because I have to pull this from the other side, presumably. Break this, pull it, and yeah. Okay. There we are. Be free. Little one. And where are you going? Hmm. Yeah. Community property, as they say. That's what he gets for having Shiro's voice. Smooth as silk. Okay. Get on in, get on in. And thank you. Just a chest. But the only Celian not long guides us out of the Night Kingdom at the end of that one quest line. Somewhere the quest line is supposed to explain basically why there are no Celian not long. It's abyss related. For Shiro? Oh, everyone loves Shiro. How is that gonna last? Let's see. Oh, okay. So we need to be quick with that. Which way is that gonna go? And it goes over there. Now we need to pull that. Let to get in it. Oh, we were too slow. We were too slow. Okay. And there. Pull that back again to keep it down. And this should hopefully do it. Yep, there we go. Cool. Another chest, and that's permanently down. It's true. Even my sister likes Shiro. Oh, so that heals Saurians. That's what was going on. Come on. Come on. 
she actually asked me today about how I was able to make friends in college. Because she's off at college now. And it... She said that she appreciates where we live a bit more now that she's been gone for a while, which... We'll, we'll see what else is counted among that number, so to say. Wait, did we get another? Wait, another figurine? Or should have, right? Did I? Are there... Yeah, we got another figurine. Okay. Absence makes the heart grow fonder. That should do it. That should automatically start that quest. I believe. We're in the vicinity. Can go and pick up the last little bit of treasure. What's on top first? Come on up. Oh no, never mind. Come on. It. I'm not all that worried about her. She's very strong willed. Sometimes that causes problems for me, but hopefully it will make her life a little easier. I hope. Okay. Hmm. Either way, we should be able to get into that end part right now. Let's see. Right, yeah. Ready and spin crystal. We've already been here, so now it's just open up the tab while we collect the reward. Yep. Oh, and there it starts. Okay. Books, traveler. There's a sealed gate over here. Yeah, don't ask how, but Papa's got the feeling that strange things we picked up nearby must have something to do with getting it open. We are just what could be behind this gate. Theodore's. Oh, this is our little guy. Can we do a monster's way? Maybe it's a treasure cave. Hey, hey, that's what Papa's got us telling her, too. Roar, don't get too excited now. All right, well, let's just go and find out. First, we get this gate open, and then, hee hee, fee, fee fly, foo fum, treasure, treasure, here we come. The two outlanders and that scarf wearing tepidly saurus over there are. Eh, aren't you the energetic one, seriously? Haven't you told them this seals a seal because it's meant to seal forbidden areas? You won't find anything in there except for terribly profound curses. Roar, wait, so that means there's no treasure. Oh, I'm sure there is probably, probably. Yes, but what it is, some of you outliners should be poking around, for the forbidden ground that lies behind that door is also holy ground. When experienced couriers who have completed the trials and received approval may enter within, it is said, as a medium by which our ancestors come in with a world of night. Seeing of which, I wasn't gone that long, was I, and yet here you are with the three trial completion keystones in tow. Impressive. And when it comes to climbing up and down looking for stuff, you won't find many better than us. Roar. Even tribal couriers might not match your speed, while you're still not permitted to enter these taboo grounds, but my camp is nearby. How about I treat you a quick bite? You can enjoy a comfy rest. I better rob us. Ooh. We're not hungry yet since we've come this far already. Don't worry about it. You can rest. Paimon will keep watch. You sure you just won't sleep sounder than I will? Seriously, girl, Paimon will show you. But if you two sure seem to go on well, I'll let come around now. The camp and rest await. I'll bear some hot food. Guess from afar and should chance allow. We may have much to talk about. It's the camp over there. And since we can't open this art ourselves, it... <laughs> there's no way he doesn't rob us, right? <laughs> this is... The only option is stupidity. Oh, he's got a chest there. You need a sound ceremony? Want to try my cooking? You want to make some yourself? Got a recipe in the box over there. Along with some things I don't use. Feel free to go through them. Hey, you care recipes on you. Drew up a bunch of copies myself. As it happens, it might be of use, might not, but it could save a life if you run into someone who's saving. Wouldn't you agree? We've well, sure given this some thought. Drew all you want yourself to rely on when you're outside of the tribe. Actually, I haven't asked your name yet. Legba. My name, huh? Call me Legba. New friends. Oh, that's a bad sign. Because Papa Legba is in Krayol and sort of voodoo. Basically, they're devil. You choose yourself to Legba. So, Paman, Traveler, and Theodore are still tepidly sore, so marvelous fate it is that had you meet here in Natlan. Speaking of what, Traveler, what are you doing? Either types through the ground, some treasure hunting, secret seeking. Former naturally, neither mere curiosity brought us here. Yep. Or. Yeah, it's right. A well-protected place like this has got to be home to treasure, right? Whatever the case, don't get any funny ideas about the place. Outsiders will not permit you to enter. This is where ancient ancestors reestablished contact with a knight. Since that day, more and more tribes have been able to enter the Night Kingdom's gates. Er, sort of place is this Night Kingdom anyway. 
Oh, well, I've heard that's where all people of Nalton go in the view of this world, and only a few ever return. They say the water flows like alluring light there. They say monumental obsidian tablets stand. It's no place for you to be curious about even more so than our taboo grounds. Oh, so about the thing you mentioned earlier, the one that communicates with the night world. A medium, yes. An ancient tool by which our forebears made contact with the Wyob. The envoys of the Night Kingdom. Well, an ancient tool, Rar. Perhaps I've said too much, whatever. Today, a stable connection has been established to the Night Kingdom, and so a medium has long been unnecessary. If you ask me, such methods were but crude to begin with. Still, it is a sacred relic for human drives, Rar. All right, all right, we get it. Could be right and proper. Do not trespass upon the taboo grounds. That's the way. Ha ha, your companion is clever, a clever child indeed. I too had many such brilliant children, but now I walk alone. Many years it has been since I left the flocks. I wonder if he's kind of like that one evil guy whose name I forget from Samara. Him, a knight has drawn knight, has drawn knight sooner than I expected. Yet, honestly, hearing so much stuff she doesn't really understand is making Palmon sleepy. Look at me getting all carried away like this, bring me the occasional person to talk to, and I get all chatty. If you don't mind, would you like to rest here for the night? I can prepare bedding for you. We'll be out patrolling at night anyway, so you need not fear for your safety. And yeah, thanks, that's thoughtful of you. Or Lying on a bed of warm grass, you so you drift off as the campfire flickers by your side, but you feel as though some faint noise lingers by your ear, preventing you from falling into a deeper slumber. Till some cold, something cold and moist makes contact with your cheek, dragging you from the thick, dark night of dreamland. Kirby's dreamland. You open your eyes to the side of Theodorx's friendly, familiar face. It seems that he was looking to wake you up. A moment later, you realize that he's trying to show you something. Strange obsidian statue. Rawr. And this? Oh, one of those jades to open up challenges that aren't already open. Rawr, did you find this or spit it out? No. Rue. Come on, where did you get that idea? Oh, don't you think this thing looks kind of ominous? You're a reader of omens now, aren't you? Looks pretty valuable. Yeah, surely something this ugly couldn't sell for much. Wait a sec, this means you ran off while you were sleeping, didn't you, Theodorix? Rue. Not good, ready to find this thing anyway. Was it some sort of super dangerous, super dirty place? Rue, Theodorix, Trevor, Witter, Paimon, we're still here, what's up? Heard here upon hearing Theodorix's cries, what happened? Rar, this, this is. Unbelievable, this obsidian statue is a medium that our ancestors once used to communicate with the Night Kingdom. Sealed behind that great gate, deep inside the Forbidden Grounds, they do it to make the little Tibetan resource to get out for you. You stole the travel route, and you think I even prepared this camp for you and a place to rest. Come on, we can explain, Russell Ron, well, since it got us. Was it on purpose, Maru? It's been the situation in leg, but I wonder if you could fight him if we chose one of the other options. That's what happened, so I think it's in my mind how that subtle one can simply tunnel everywhere, a failure on my part. Still, this is a problem now. This medium has long been unused, but it is still a sacred relic. If the wild were to be angered, we'd be in deep trouble. What do we do then? Whatever the case, I must trouble you all to return the statue to its rightful place, Rar. Or maybe it was his doing. Because Legba... It's more Satan in a kind of Luciferian or Gnostic sense, I think. Also sort of a grantor of power. That maybe is here to sort of get us in with the Night Kingdom. That means you too. A little trouble like you're here. I actually avoided one sometime. Okay. This time, okay. Come, let's go. But just so you're aware. Passing the ruins are winding. You feel the mechanisms to stay wary. To the night, what is the night's open the gate? Crude obsidian statue, a uniquely shaped obsidian statue with very distinctive colors. It was once used by the people of Notlin. It's a medium to communicate with the quote unquote Night Kingdom. He actually did not stop us. Forest of Color? That's cool. Gave us some stuff. You know what? Let's check that recipe real quick. Oh, can it interact with a Saurian? Okay. Well. Let's see what that actually is, real quick. Filter by incomplete proficiency. Fruit salad, basically. Yummy, yummy. Corn, tomato, onion, and mint. Well, it's actually... Tomato, onion. That's interesting. Healthy. You won't feel stressed. That might be useful for you, but I think... I will be. Coming back later. It's late. In the gate, you encounter a strange door out in the lawns of not one's shattered night jade. You were with black jade, enveloped in chilling flames. If it could be pieced together, so perhaps something extraordinary might happen. Probably one of those other fight areas. For now, I think... Let's just mark our areas. You're welcome. I try to be helpful. Kind of. Sometimes. Not really. I'm evil. But you knew that already. Okay. Well... Got a bis done, we got a couple of quests done. I got emotional. You know, we we did a lot today. 
So I think that's a good place to stop. We want a little over time, but because I was having fun. It's because we were having fun. What do you mean, sadly? It. I got to experience personal growth. Nothing maligned happened. Well, I'm glad you enjoyed it. I'll see you next time. Hopefully. Unless I don't know you drop dead. Hopefully that doesn't happen. Sun Dragon.